we see throughout the word of God that the remnant have always been a select few, a small group of people chosen by God's grace who will turn back to him during a time of wickedness, who will serve him, honor him, and trust him. In the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 9, it says, Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a small remnant, we should have been as Sodom and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Revival. When we read the book of Revelation, we see that five out of the seven churches were told to repent in the end of times or God would remove their lampstand. That's over 70% of churches in the body of Christ told to come to repentance. God is gonna use his remnant army to bring life back to the body of Christ. And in these end times, the remnant will spread revival throughout the nations. Outreach. In the word of God, it is a command that when you are a saved believer, you are to go preach the gospel to all nations. Every creature, God is sending his remnant army to go to the highways and byways, the places that nobody wants to go, to witness in spirit and in power. He's sending his soldiers to go reach the one and leave the 99. God is looking for people who are willing to be discipled and make disciples. Center. Many people think that a church is only a place of worship, but the church is really much more than that. A center is a community where a variety of ministries come alive. RROC, the Remnant Revival Outreach Center, will be a place where people with different assignments, callings, and destinies will come together in unity to glorify Jesus Christ. We need to normalize discipleship and true accountability in the body of Christ. The Remnant Revival Outreach Center will be a training facility to equip the saints not only in person, but also digitally throughout the nations God is doing a quick work using the digital spaces. The return of our Lord and Savior is right around the corner. The Remnant Revival Outreach Center is a place where you can be planted and grow into your calling, your destiny, and your ministry. Click the link and take this free discipleship course to become a member and to be held accountable and be discipled, digitally or in person. God bless you all. And welcome to the Remnant Army. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Remnant Revival Outreach Center official live stream. Your host today, Alexander Lorenzo. That's me, the guy with the mustache. And today is going to be a beautiful service. It's going to be a Deliverance 101, the Deliverance Ministry, how to cast out demons, heal the sick, as well as how to get deliverance for yourself, taught by Apostle Richard Lorenzo Jr. If you are new here, if you're a newbie, if you're new to this channel, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share it with a friend. If you share it, it's a form of evangelism because what you're doing is you're sharing the gospel because that's all we talk about here. The Remnant Revival Outreach Center loves Jesus. Jesus is our rock, hence the name, rock. I mean, it's not spelled correctly, but it sounds like rock, and that's why we kind of picked it. That's one of the reasons. And if you listen to the name, it's actually an outreach center. So remnant, right? Remnant army, right? Select few. Revival, right? What is revival? A whole bunch of people getting saved. Revival is breaking out right now. Outreach, that's obvious. Center, it's a center, right? So here, specifically, Apostle Richard Lorenzo Jr. actually trains people to be sent out and to, to start revival. So a lot of people come here from different churches and different places all over the world to just get trained up. And obviously the DNA of this church is uh, specifically evangelism. So 
In this video here, we're going to be talking about the, the subject of deliverance. And that obviously plays a role in evangelism. Because sometimes you can get a word of knowledge, things start flowing, someone gets deliverance on the spot. Next thing you know, 10 other people around you are freaking out like, yo, this is crazy. What is that? Next thing you know, they're convicted and they're getting their, their breakthrough as well. They're getting the gospel and they're, you know, it, it's miracle signs and wonders, right? And one of them are, is deliverance. So it's going to be a very insightful video. It's going to be amazing. And again, just really quickly, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share it with a friend. Now, while you guys put where you're from in the chat, put where you're from in the chat, go ahead and put it in there. I want to talk about the discipleship course. So there's a discipleship course, and it's on a platform called School. Deacon S. Dana, you can put the link for me. Deacon S. Dana is going to put a link. And in that link, she's going to pin it to the top. There's a link within the link. <laughs> there's a link within the link, and it's basically the course. It says, free discipleship course. It's 20 kingdom principles. This is exactly how it goes. You get through the 20 videos. It teaches you our doctrine, the way we think, and everything's backed up with scripture. 20 kingdom, uh, 20 kingdom principles taught by Apostle Richard Lorenzo Jr., all backed up by scripture. So it's kind of like it's discipleship. Then you get invited to a private group in school. In this private group, there's a gamification ranking system. Basically, the more interactions you do, the more likes you get on your posts, the more high-quality posts you put out, the more you talk to people, the more you basically gain reputation, uh, reputation within the community, you actually rank up. Now, we just launched a second private group, and this is the second school. This is where you're actually being trained up to be a leader. Now, I can't disclose specific details, but I heard through the grapevine, I heard through the, the, the rumors that in this second, sec like, so you got the first 20 videos, the, 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 the private group. In the second private group, I heard there's going to be some very, very high quality training, evangelist training, financial training. All different types of videos are going to be in the second one. So it's going to get, like, even deeper. Now, the reason why we put this uh, filter, it's kind of like a filter because a lot of people, they say they're living for Christ, but they're not really living for Christ, right? They're just... You guys ever have that friend that, he, you know, you say he's your friend, right? And you guys hang out. But behind you, he's talking smack about you. He's low-key taking money from your countertop, right? Like he's not really a friend, but he's saying he's a friend. A lot of people do that with Jesus. A lot of people say they follow Jesus, but they, they just they like everything that comes with it. They like the show, but they don't actually follow Jesus. And it says in the Bible specifically to make disciples of all nations, not Christians of all nations. The difference between a Christian and a disciple is pretty big. A disciple is a student, someone that follows with intent, that really wants to learn. Like, think about what a student means. Like, he's sitting down, like, I want to learn. Like, you know, that's what a student is. So we created this filtration process on purpose. A lot of congregations, I'm not going to call it out, and specifically I've been to some, they're, they'll do anything to get new members. They're like, we like to do the opposite. Right? Less is more. We, we try to have high quality individuals. We try to have people around us that are very serious about the gospel, extremely serious, and there's dimensions to it. So, you know, as you get further and further, you rank up, get to the, this group, get to that group, you get deeper, deeper into the private inner circle. And obviously, as you go deeper, the people that you're around are more, they're more serious about the gospel. They're taking it, there's definitely levels to that. Um, so I want you guys to know that, that is, that's how the system works. It's kind of the opposite of, like, mega churches. Like, mega churches are, like, trying to get as many people in no matter what, and they compromise. We do the opposite of compromising. We stick to the Bible as closely as we possibly can. We do it aggressively, and we make sure it's followed and it's biblical, and we hold each other accountable. So if you're looking for discipleship, join the group. Why? Because we have, a, we have an interview coming up. Why? Because we're training up leaders, Right? The goal here is to save a billion souls. I say this every service. We're trying to save a billion souls. I know there's some people that when I say this, they're like, they're like, okay, a billion souls. Like, okay, right? You're probably like, whatever, bro. That's one ninth of the entire human population. It's a big number. But what we're doing is we're trying to disciple leaders. We're trying to make leaders. Why? Because if you have a million leaders, which is, that's a doable number. I mean, think about the influencers. Some of them, I mean, what, Mr. Beast has like 100 million followers, right? So if you can get a million leaders or if you can get 10 million leaders to all help and reach 100,000 people, that's where those numbers start to become realistic. 
right? So the system that we're putting in place is actually to rise leaders. We're not selfish. We want other people to start congregations and to start their own branch of Remnant Revival Outreach Center. Hence, why Apostle just popped up in New York randomly to do what? Evangelist training. He literally went out to New York, did not tell nobody, did a pop-up, told everybody to pull up, and started evangelizing to show people. There's a reason why he live streams all of his evangelism techniques and just gives it out. Because we want people to spread the gospel. We want to reach every corner of the earth. We want to reach a billion souls. Why? Think about it. Think about yourself. Why did you get saved? What dirt were you in? I think about all the dirt I was in. And I just only feel like telling people how to get out. We have found the answer. And the answer is Jesus. And everybody should know. And that is the DNA. And that's what I want people to know. I hope you feel the spirit of God. Where are you guys from? I'm going to leave it in here. Click the link. Click the link. Click the link. Get into the discipleship course. All right, we got someone here. Let's do, come over here for the interview. I'm screaming at the camera too much. All right, what's your name? Lewis. What's up, Lewis? Not yeah, much. Pretty good. How much do you love Jesus? You got to give me, like, you got to show him how much you love Jesus. There's no number. There's, there's, no, there's no number. There's no number, no match, no, no nothing. And I, I, I know him uh, the way I remember him. As one time, I was walking outside to go get some food. And he was, he was speaking in tongues around the entire parking lot. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. yeah he, was like, he was like, I don't care, bro. I'm getting out of the church. Started firing up the entire parking lot. Like, I just seen him. <laughs> He's on, so let me ask you a question. You're on fire for God, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. You're serious about it? Yep. He serves faithfully. He comes to the church. What have you learned at the Remnant Viral Outreach Center that maybe you could share with somebody that, that doesn't have an ecclesia, that doesn't have a church, that just kind of is kind of half doing you know, it says don't forsake the assembly of saints, but they're not pulling up. What would you say to them? Um, this church has really given me discipline in serving, in staying faithful, in seeking God. In pretty much every area of my life, I can, I can say this church has really uplifted me. Amen. And you're not lying, right? I don't know. Be honest. Don't, don't lie. Like, for real. Nah. You can tell the truth. I am. So you actually feel like it helps you a lot in your, in your personal life? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 100%. So this is transferable to real life? Oh, yes. Do you have a testimony for any, like a testimony that you can, you can say? Yeah. I used to live like 10 minutes from here. And um, my house was fully loaded with like witchcraft and every type of sin that you can think of. Um, I lived an, an experience where I had to make a decision, and um, I repented for what everything happened in there. I was alone in my room, pretty much like a apostle. I fell down to the floor. I cried out to God, and he answered, and now I'm here. Amen. So you didn't have somebody pray over you? Not at all. So you received deliverance randomly by yourself just by asking God? Yes. That's actually consistent with what happened with me. I mean, I got deliverance. So I'm not going to lie to you. I came to Christ. Uh, actually, Deacon Kevin casted out the spirit of rejection out of me. Like, he, he specifically prayed over me. But I would say 80% of my deliverance came to when I was in my room by myself, just speaking to God and things of that nature. So is there any tip you can give somebody uh, to seek God even more, get deeper dimensions with God? Like, how do you do it? How I, I feel like God seduced me through music because um, worship is really, really uh, in my heart. So I would get into worship and I would start declaring the word of God and just expressing really how I feel for him. And he showed up every time. Amen. Last question. Do you evangelize? When I'm moved. When you're moved. We're going to change that yeah. in Jesus' name. Oh, yeah. Amen. Thank you so much, brother. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, we gotta get we gotta get see, we gotta hold him accountable, get him to evangelize more. After this video, he will. But yeah, powerful testimony. As you can see, it uplifts him in different areas. There's there's a big discipline thing here. We try to make sure everybody's held accountable. We're all hard workers. Remember, when Jesus was doing the Last Supper, people don't know this. I mean you do know this. You should know this, you read the Bible, but a lot of people don't recognize this. That's what I meant to say. Jesus was in the room with his disciples, right? This guy, this God, washed their feet while knowing he was about to get betrayed, right? 
and then gave him a representation of him sacrificing an entire body, right? Like going through pain and torture, right? So if there's anything about Jesus that we know, we know he's a hard worker. We knew he was disciplined. He, he did not play no games. He got things done. He got things done in his three-year ministry. His three-year ministry impacted the entire human race forever, basically, through his three-year ministry. And you should be working hard as well. I also want to talk about specifically working hard in the Bible, right, and, and educating yourself and putting time and work in a secret place. Head on over to school. There's Bible studies, three a week. We do three Bible studies a week currently right now. I actually host one of them. And in the Bible studies, we actually, what did you say? In the Bible, she's trying to speak to me on the side. You might as well just come in. In the Bible studies, there's actually mass deliverance. So if you're interested in the topic of mass deliverance, of what we're, we're talking about here on the actual video, they do it. So you might have a deacon or a pastor we're casting out demons on live Zoom. Remember, it's not us. It's the Holy Spirit that casts out the demons. So you can get your healing, guys. You can get your healing. Get through the 20 videos. Just knock it out. You can do it in less than a week, right? There's 20 kingdom principles. I think they're like 30 to 45 minutes long. Knock them out. Get in the group. And then pull up to the, to the Bible studies. They're amazing. I have another interview here. Come on over. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. All right, I'm going to ask you a couple questions. We're running out of time here. What's your name? Jenny. How you doing, Jenny? Doing good. All right, I asked everybody this question just to see their reaction. You got to show us. How much do you love Jesus? Wait. You got to show, like how, like, how much do you love Jesus? I love Jesus. Hey, hey, that, that's, I'll give it a, hey, rate it, rate it in the comment section. I give it, I get it 8.5. I get it 8.5. Right in the comments, like, what do you think out of 10? How, how is that, how is that the showcase of loving Jesus? All right, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you have a recent testimony that you, that you want to speak of? Um, I would say it's pretty recent. I would say um, ever since moving to Orlando, we knew that it was God moving us to Orlando because we were looking for, like, a, a good home church, and we were driving from Tampa to Orlando, coming to the Rock, and we didn't have any money to move, and it ended up being that uh, we ended up getting evicted in Tampa, but God provided money. Like, my husband got money in his bank account from his school randomly, and we, it covered our costs to move, to move into an apartment. We didn't have to pay a deposit at the apartment that we got approved for, and, like, we just knew, like, God wanted us to be here in Orlando for the rock. Amen. Amen. A lot of people move, including me. I, I moved from South Florida up here just for the church. Bro, there's a lot. Like, there's so many people. I was talking to Dre. Shout out Dre. He's moving up here. So many people are coming because the power of God is here, man. The spirit of God dwells within here. The fruits are showing. People are getting saved, right? And I want to be around that. I want to be about, about the legitimate, like the truth, right? You would say the same, right? Yes, for sure. The Holy Spirit moves heavily here. Yeah. Amen. And now, do you have like a recent revelation like a, just like a simple revelation that you've caught, like reading the word or experiencing in life and being taught by the Holy Spirit? Um, I would say the most recent revelation was um, recently they told us, uh, the women's, they told us to write a sermon about God's love. And uh, while I was writing it, I kind of didn't want to write it because I felt kind of, I don't know, I guess I got delivered through writing the sermon because God was teaching me about his love and about how we just have to abide in him and just really accept his love because without, if we can't accept it, we're not going to be able to experience it because it's a gift. It's a gift that he's given to us. And when, once you accept it, you get to know your identity in Christ and really walk that out. Amen. And I, I you know, the woman of God holds you accountable, right? Yes. For sure. There's no room for error, right? Well, there's room, but you're saved, right? Yeah, exactly. Amen. Any other any other final thoughts? Uh, no. Just come experience God's presence here. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much. All right. Last interview. We got three minutes left. I'm gonna knock this one out quick. Come on, brother. All right. What's up? So, if you guys didn't know, um, what's your name again? Joshua. Joshua here. What was it? How long ago? Like three months ago? Oh yeah, about three months. Three months ago, you got saved, right? Radically saved. He got called out in the audience, and Pastor was or Apostle Rich was like. Yo, you're a drug dealer, right? Mm-hmm. And then what happened? Um, well, when I first came here, first, like, they was telling people to bring up their vapes to the altar. And I was like, oh, okay, like, I'll bring up my vape. But I had, like, a bunch of vapes at home and stuff, too. So then I was like, okay, like, I'll give up the vape. I'll see, like, what this about. And then, like, when I went up, he's like, give up everything. And I was like, oh, okay, like, now I got to give up everything, like, if I'm really taking this seriously. And it made me think, like, like do I really want to take this seriously? And... 
like originally I had went up for um cuz I I wanted to like I wanted to like stop having like nightmares cuz I would always have like nightmares and sleep paralysis and it would be like really bad to the point where I would like just not sleep for like a day or so just cuz I didn't want to like have sleep paralysis or none of that. So like um I went up for that specifically but then he told me like this is the cause of that and if you want to get at the root then you're going to have to change completely. Hey Amen. So so um yeah, he brought mer- he brought weed to the altar. So Apostle was like, yo, and you guys can watch the video. It's like on the live streams. Go look at it. Apostle was like, and there's I think there's a regular video too, not just a live stream. Apostle was basically like, hey, man, I'll buy the weed off of you and, and burn it and throw it away. So you ended up bringing it. Bro, that's grace, bro. I'm going to be real with you, bro. That's grace. Yeah, it's grace. That's, that's grace. yeah for sure. Because even like um, when I went up there too, like um, Apostle had said like, um, I'm not, I'm not going to just like, deliver it from, like, I'm not just going to deliver you. I'm going to, like, make sure you, like, give up the old lifestyle that you was having because if I just deliver you on the spot, you're going to get delivered, but you're going to come back even worse. Yes, yeah, so that's one of the uh, deliverance principles. If, they, if you cast out a demon, there's seven more looking to re-enter the body through legal right. So you don't want to cast out demons of people that, you know, they're not taking it serious. But thank you so much. You took it serious. He's here. Thank you so much. Peace out, man. Thank you so much. He's trying to help as many people as possible. That's it for the pre-show. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the sermon. Enjoy the worship. Catch you guys later. Alex out. Peace out. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to the RROC. How's everybody doing tonight? That's how we do it tonight? Really? No, okay. So, how is everybody doing tonight? Amen. Okay, hallelujah. Good. I was a little scared for a second. So, welcome to the RROC. My name is Deaconess Jenny, and I'm going to be doing the announcements today. Um, who is outside of the state of Florida? Where are you guys from? South Carolina. Amen. Who else? Where are you from? Virginia, wow, amen. And where are you from? I think I saw your hand up. No? No? Okay, all right, well, never mind. Well, anybody, welcome to the RROC. So we're going to get started with the announcements. So please be advised that we record everything that happens during the service. The same reason being as the disciples recorded on pen and paper, we record with what we have today. So... We're here to shine our light. We're not here for publicity. We're not here for clout. We're here to glorify the name of Jesus Christ. Next slide, please. Stay connected. We have Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok, and those are the handles. Um, I really do recommend staying connected through our social media platforms because we we give important announcements. Um, Sometimes for evangelism, we let you know where to go. So make sure that you are plugged in with those. Next. The Church Center app. Everybody in this building has the Church Center app, and this is where we do our giving. It's really important that we do it through here or through cash, not through Cash App or PayPal or Zelle, because at the end of the year, you get a tax statement, and that statement shows what you tied so you could put it in for your taxes. Next, please. Discipleship. This is my favorite slide because the discipleship course is so pivotal. It go Apostle Rich, he made it and he he goes into key fundamental points about our Christian walk in this discipleship course. And it's it's good. It doesn't matter if you're a seasoned Christian or you're a brand new Christian. Having these down pat is so important. So I really do recommend doing the discipleship course. And then afterwards, you'll have a link that links you to our our online community, where we go into Bible studies, we go into mass deliverances multiple times a week. So really finish that discipleship course and get plugged in. Next. So our service schedules is Tuesdays and Saturdays at 7 p.m. Our doors open 30 minutes early, and we just ask that you arrive on time so we can get to know you a little bit. Next slide, please. Outreach, so join us. 
for outreach. We are an outreach church. It's literally in our name and what outreach is. It's evangelism. It's spreading the good news of the gospel. It's spreading who Jesus is to the lost. We go into the highways, the byways, the places, the places that people don't want to go. So we need help because it says that the um, the harvest is ready, but the laborers are few. So come and join us. Come and evangelize with us. Come reach the lost with us. Amen. Next, please. Support our merch. I think we have Ben on the merch table over there. We have a lot of merch, and we actually have, we ordered our samples, so we got new merch coming. I'm so excited. They look so cool. So make sure that you get over there and support. Next, please. And lastly, please silence your cell phones. And nobody want to be that guy where your phone's just ringing in the middle of the service. Amen? So please, just silence them or turn them off altogether. All right. Amen. God bless everybody. How you guys doing tonight? Good evening, family. How you guys doing tonight? Amen. I'm always excited to see you guys. Amen. You guys look good tonight. Amen. So I just want y'all to get, just get a little loose. You know what I'm saying? We come together to glorify God. So this is not the time to be stiff. Loosen up. Have fun. I want you guys to look to your neighbor and say, I'm so glad you're here. And give your neighbor a high five. Come on. Give him a high five. Hallelujah. Give him a high five. Yes. Yes. Yes, welcome everybody, also online. We're so glad that you can join us tonight. We're so grateful that you're here and that we even get to glorify God together with our international family. Amen? Amen. So let's do this. Can I have everybody to stand up? Hallelujah. All right. I want everybody to just go like this. Come on. Shake it all off. Shake it loose. Come on, let go. Everything, come on, yep, there it is, there it is, there it is. I want to see some smiles on your face, and I want everybody to say hallelujah. I love Jesus. Come on, we come together. This is, this is the time to where we come together, and we, 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 we have fun, you know. We forget about everything outside because nothing else matters except Jesus. He's the only person that matters. He gets our full attention. He gets everything. You know what I'm saying? So when we understand that he is everything, we take that even outside. When we have the storms, when we have things that come against us, here is the time to where we recharge, we refuel. We come together, we sing, we dance, we laugh, we cry, you know? And we recharge and we take that outside. We take that outside and we allow our light to shine. We showed the entire world Jesus. Everybody say, I want to show the world Jesus. Amen. So earlier today, I was meditating on the scripture. And um, we all read the, the story about Joshua and Caleb, right? When Moses sent the 12 spies. We all know that story, right? I'm not going to read it entirely, but I'm going to give you a little gist. So basically what happened was Moses... So sent 12 spies to go spy the land that God had promised them, the promised land, flown with milk and honey. And it was promised to them that God had already given it to them. All they had to do was go and take it. But it was already theirs. Like a lot of the things that are already ours in our life, but all we have to do is take it, right? So it's funny how the journey to go spy out the land was 40 days. It was a 40-day journey. They went to go spy out the land. And, you know, it took them 40 days. But then they come back with their report. They came back with the report. After they seen the giants, after they seen, quote, unquote, the fortified city, after they seen everything, they came back with the reports. And here's where everything went wrong. And it kind of showed me how there's a correlation between that story and then our lives, even as Christians. So they came back and they brought bad reports. They basically brought a bad report and not only the report was bad, but it was a lie. They fabricated the report that they brought back. They exaggerated the report, all of the above. And 
I understood why God was so upset because with that bad report, the people, all the people above the age of 20, 20 and above, they all died. They were all struck dead. God said you will not inherit that, the, the promised land. But when you think about it, it goes deeper. Because there are promises that God has promised us. It is ours. But despite the promise, we say it's too big for us. We will not achieve it. The giants that they acknowledge, the giants that they acknowledge, how many of us have giants in our lives that we acknowledge? That we say, despite God has promised me this, despite he's promised me my healing, despite he's promised me breakthrough, but yet you bring bad reports. How do you bring bad reports? Because you walk around with your head down, you walk around with your chest down, you complain. You, it, it, it stops you from spending quality time with God because you're so focused on the situation. You're so focused on the giants that are in your life that you don't even acknowledge God. You see, the problem was that they made a big God look small in front of everybody else. That's what upset it, God. That's why he was so angry. To know that I have promised you something. I'm the God of the universe. But then for you to come and to bring back a bad report, you know, it correlates with a lot of our lives. But we have two people, Joshua and Caleb. Caleb, did you did you guys know that Caleb's name actually means dog? Did you guys know that? And it's in a good sense because Caleb was a dog. Like he ain't play no games. He said, stop your talking. We can take this land God has given it to us while everybody was sitting here bringing back bad report Caleb actually pro practiced Romans I believe Romans 3 4 let every man be a liar but God be true let every man be a liar but God be true he practiced that he stood on business he stood on what God told him he stood on what God promised him. He stood on the word of God, despite everything that he's seen, despite the giants that he witnessed, despite the quote unquote, the fortified city, despite all of that, it was two who stood on the promise of God and that was Caleb and Joshua. They didn't care. See, this is how we have to be as followers of Jesus Christ. We gotta stand on the word of God, amen? We have to trust what the Lord has promised us. It is ours. All we have to do is go and get it. You see, God desires a partnership with us. A lot of times we just want to be like this and just say, God, I don't have to do anything. I'm just going to stand here and you're going to give me everything I want, everything I need. I'm not going to put in any work. I'm not going to show you that I trust you. I'm not going to show you that I believe the word that you have spoken to me. You see, we have to break out of that mindset. And we have to know that because we have already received all, everything that Jesus Christ has given to us, now we walk into it. That takes a level of walking into it. We have to walk into it. We have to walk into it. That's faith. You see, that's faith. Faith is when the action follows as well. But you don't see it, but you believe it so much that you walk. You walk. When you're looking for that healing, but it isn't there yet, but you know you are healed and you keep prophesying over yourself that I am healed in the name of Jesus. I am healed by the blood of Jesus. When you go in the doctor's office and you receive a report, and that report was a bad report. And you say in the name of Jesus, I canceled that report. I don't come into agreement with that report. You see, my God, he's the ultimate healer. He's the one who heals. So tonight, I want everybody to just think about the bad reports that we've brought. And I want us to completely let it all go. To have a change of mind tonight. To allow the Holy Spirit to navigate your mind, your heart, everything that's deep within your soul, to allow it to surface and to let it go. You see, the Holy Spirit is going to transform a lot of minds tonight. 
the Holy Spirit is going to break change and bondage off of a lot of people's minds tonight. But you have to be receptive. You have to be receptive. You have to be willing to say, you know what, Holy Spirit? I submit to your teaching. I submit to what you're showing me. Tonight, I truly desire to be a student in your school of training. Amen? I want everybody to say, I'm a student in your school of training. Believe what the Lord has promised you. You see, the ultimate goal of the enemy is just to get you to doubt. Amen? So I want everybody to just close your eyes as we welcome in the Holy Spirit, as we welcome his presence. Just close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Oh, hearts are open tonight. Breakthrough shall happen tonight. Chains shall be broken tonight. Lord, the mind shall be changed tonight. Father, you will reveal to us where we have gone wrong and you will bring us back. The times to where we have forgotten your word and we have exalted our own perception of life. We have exalted our own meaning, our own definition. Father, we repent right now. And tonight, Lord, we just thank you that you are circumcising our heart, that you are pulling back layers that you are cleaning us up so that we can be a living true demonstration of your love father we thank you right now in jesus mighty name we pray and the whole church says the whole church says amen 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 i want you guys to welcome up the worship team come on give it up for the worship team I want, come on hallelujah Give Jesus a shot of praise in the house tonight. Give Jesus a shot of praise. Tonight when we go into worship, I need you guys to enter into worship with a heart and a mind that whatever you're asking for him, you already received it. With a heart and a mind that you believe that all things are possible and there's nothing impossible through Christ Jesus. If you enter worship with that type of mindset and that type of heart posture, there is nothing that you can ask him that you will not receive, that you already have received since he died on that cross 2,000 years ago. Tonight, we're going to let go of every single heavy burden. We're going to let go of every single thought that is of, a, of the enemy. We're going to catch it captive and throw it down. We're gonna use the word of God to fight against the enemy tonight. And we're gonna worship the Lord. We're gonna give him glory. We're gonna praise him. We're gonna lose our voice tonight. I want you guys to loosen up. Right now, just shake it off. Shake it off, shake it off. Shake it off. Start shaking it off. Some people still standing there looking at me. I really literally mean, shake it off, man of God. Shake it off. Shake it off. You over there that's standing up, I don't know your name and you're very tall, but shake it off. Come on, start shaking it off. Start shaking it off. Start shaking it off. Start shouting a hallelujah to Jesus. Start shouting a hallelujah to Jesus. Raise up your voice to the Lord. Raise up your voice to the Lord. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. You know, Sometimes we get into battles and we don't realize that it's already finished, that the enemy is already defeated. And the reason why we don't realize it is because we give up, not because he gives up. It's because we give up. We're standing there waiting to see something, but you, faith doesn't work by seeing something. Faith works by believing. The moment you believe, whatever you believe in will happen. But if you're waiting for it to happen, that's when you can actually lose the war. So when I say give him glory, give him glory, give him glory, you have to actually give him glory. You have to have the action. You have to put the action behind it. Give him glory because he's the reason why you woke up this morning. Give him glory because he's the reason why you're worshiping the Lord. Give God glory because he's the reason why you have a husband and, and, and children. Give God glory because he's the reason why you have a wife. 
Give God glory because he's the reason why you're saved. Give God glory because he's the reason why your sins are forgiven. Give God glory because every single thing you ask of him, he gives it to you. The number one thing I need all of you in this room to remove out of your mind is the approval of man. Do not come to church for the approval of man. And I'm talking about woman and men. It's plural, not singular. Don't come for the approval of men because they're not the ones that's going to give you the things that you're looking for. When you come to church, come with the thought in your mind and in your heart that you're coming to worship the Lord your God. You're coming to surrender everything to the altar to him. Because although we may not see by our eyes, with our eyes, that you are superficial, he can see that you are superficial. So I encourage you to get rid of that superficial out of your heart and stop being real with the Lord. Tonight we're going to be real with the Lord Jesus. And whoever opens up their heart to be real with the Lord Jesus will receive every single thing that they're ready to receive because he has it on the palm of his hand ready to give it to you because where the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom I said where the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom I said where the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom who in this house is free 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 who has gained the victory through Christ Jesus who is more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus? Who in this house is, receives the freedom of the Lord Jesus? I want to hear you give him glory, give him glory, give him glory. Shout a hallelujah to Jesus. Shout a hallelujah to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to continue shouting hallelujah because the enemy is messing around with the sound. But it's okay. We're going to keep singing hallelujah. Keep singing hallelujah. Keep singing hallelujah.
once we come into agreement with the word of God, that who the sun sets free is free indeed. No demon, no principality, nothing can hold you bound to whatever is trying to hold you bound to. Because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom because he is freedom. You have to dance like the weight has been lifted because he told you to give every heavy burden that you have. And he will give you rest because his yoke is light. So it's time for us to give him everything. Give him everything that you have on your shoulders. Do it like a prophetic move. Remove it from your shoulders and hand it to the Lord Jesus. Remove it from your shoulders and hand it to the Lord Jesus. Nobody on this side is doing it. Some people on this side is doing it. No one on this side is doing it. It's a prophetic move because we serve a prophetic God. Jesus is the most prophetic man walking on earth. So when you do things in prophecy, you go on one and one and align it with him. So remove the heavy burden from your back and hand it over to the Lord Jesus so that you can actually worship.
So put some dance into it. If you're singing it, put a dance into it. Come on. There you go, woman of God. Put some dance into it. There you go, Deacon Lewis. Come on, put a dance into it. Praise Come on, Alicia. I know you got more than that. Come on. Dance up. Show them how to do it. Spirit. We can't be champions without what Jesus did because he's the ultimate champion. If you believe that Jesus is the ultimate champion with a capital C, give him a shout of praise. He is the one who is and is to come. He is the beginning and the end. He is the champion. He is the alpha. He is the omega. And he is our Lord Jesus.
seated in heavenly places. We are here and also in heaven all at once because we are one with the Holy Spirit. We have to understand that this life that we live is no longer carnal but spiritual. This life that we live, we cannot be spiritual without the Holy Spirit. And everything that Jesus has done, everything that he has conquered, he can conquer every single thing that you are facing today. Because he is the conqueror. I want everybody to say, he is the conqueror. He is my champion. And when we lift our voice and we shout, when we shout, when we shout and we praise Jesus, those things that are standing in front of us can no longer stand. Because Jesus is too powerful. My voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down.
So that means the wall of depression comes crashing down. So that means the walls of anxiety comes crashing down. So that means the walls of fear comes crashing down. So that means the walls of rejection comes crashing down. That means the walls of unforgiveness in your heart comes crashing down. That means the walls of sin comes crashing down because you have been given authority by the Lord Jesus Christ to lift up your voice against those walls. So I need everybody in this room to lift up their voice and shout so these walls can come crashing down. Lift up your voice and shout so these walls can come crashing down. Lift up your voice and shout so these walls can come crashing down. The walls are no longer your portion. The walls of depression are no longer your portion. The walls of anxiety are no longer your portion. The walls of poverty are no longer your portion. The walls of sin is no longer your portion. Because he has given you authority. He has given you authority. So receive the authority that he has given you. Jesus has given me when I lift my Instead of running from him, you run to him. The times when he chased you down, when you put your depression bigger than him, when you put your desire, your anxiety bigger than him, he chased you down. Think of like a time when you had to chase, a, like you have to chase a toddler or you have to chase your pet, when you have to get them to do the thing that needs to be done because it's important. Whatever it is that they need and then they don't, we don't know that we're not supposed to run, but sometimes we run. But instead of running from him, we run, we run to him. And we just thank you, oh God, for chasing us down, for fighting until we're found. And for every 100 people, we, you, we are the one. You are the one. I am the one. They are the one. Thank you, Jesus.
Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh,
about the moment when he just chased you down. There's no shadow he won't light up because he is the light of the world. There's no mountain he won't climb up because he is on the top of the hill. He's already there, but he wants you to be there too. It's just, a, it's just, it's not just a song. It's more than just a song. It speaks to your present. It speaks to your future. It speaks to your yesterday. Because you wouldn't be where you are if he didn't chase you down. You're standing in here because he chased you down. He sent somebody to talk to you. He sent a video for you to watch. To let you know that you belong to him. You always belong to him. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Come on, let the enemy know. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Shout it from inside of you. There's no wall you will kick down, lie you will tear down, coming after me. Come on, keep going. There's no shadow. There's no shadow. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall he won't kick down. There's no wall you will kick down, lie you will tear down, coming after me. Fill this room with this praise. Come on. Come on, keep going louder, louder. There's no wall he won't kick down. Keep going, keep going. There's no shadow. There's no wall. There's no wall you won't kick down. Lie you won't tear down. Coming after me. Come on, there's no shadow. There's no shadow.
covers a multitude of sins. His perfect love is what casts out all fear. His perfect love is what chases after you. It's a beautiful love. He's so beautiful and he loves us so much. It doesn't matter what you, you've done. It doesn't matter how bad you think you've fallen. You can always get back up, hold on to his love. Pull yourself back up, hold on to the love of Jesus. Allow him to pour that love into your heart. Don't let the enemy lie to you and make you think that what you've done can't be covered up by the love of God. It's impossible. He has a perfect love for each and every single one of you. A love so intimate, it'll touch each and every single one of you personally. Hold on to that. It's so beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. What a 
you guys to get into a posture of worship. A posture of worship where you don't worship with your lips now, you just worship with your heart. Your heart sings a song to the Lord that your lips can never sing. Because sometimes our lips declare that we love him, but our heart is far from him. So right now, let our hearts sing to him. Let our hearts get near to him, closer to him. And let's receive the blessing that the Lord has given to us today. Because the Lord blesses you. The Lord keeps you. He's going to let his light shine upon you and give you peace tonight. So receive that blessing. Receive the blessing of the Lord.
your family and your children and their children and their children. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you. He is with you. He is with you in the morning, in the evening, in your coming and your going. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give it up for Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Man, God is so good. He's so beautiful. He is for us. He is for us every time. You know, one of the greatest things that that, that God always reveals to us he is so loving he is he doesn't hold anything against us right he always steps out to us to reveal to us hey I got you at any moment I got you I'm here for you receive it receive it whether it be his love his patience everything right and he shows us by what? By that cross. His son. He sent his son. He gave us his son so we may have life. Amen? And I want to talk about something that's very, very important in the kingdom of God. That's actually in the character of God, in the DNA of God. Giving. He gave his only begotten son, right? His only begotten son. I want to say we give unto God because we love him. We love him. He gave his only begotten son because he, lo he first loved us. The word of God says that he, we did not choose him. He chose us. And he chose to send his only begotten son because he loves us that much. Hallelujah. In Acts 20, verse 35, it says, In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work we must help weak. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Amen? It is more blessed to give. The Lord actually wants to increase us so we can give more. He wants, that's, that's the type of increase. That, is that the type of increase you guys want to have? You work hard to give. You give unto the Lord. So according to the scriptures, he'll open up the heaven's gates and overflow you. It says to test him with your tithes and offerings. Is that not in the scriptures? Because we love him. We want to receive blessing. Why? Because we want to bless others. Because it's better to give than to receive. It's in our DNA. It's in our DNA from the moment that we're born. Did you guys know that when a baby is born and you're holding the baby and you're feeding the baby that milk, do you know that the baby does an act of giving? Did you guys know that? The baby does an act of giving. Y'all ever seen the baby reach out the hand and touch the face of the mother or the father that's feeding? 
Y'all ever seen that? That's the first social act of a human being. And it's actually giving. It's in all of our DNA. I know life gets in the way. And the mindset starts to change. But never forget that your DNA is God's DNA. It's God's DNA. And we do it because we love. We love him. And we want to keep on doing and giving unto him because of what he's doing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus Christ is in this building. The Lord Jesus Christ is here to deliver. The Lord Jesus Christ is here to bless you. To overflow you in the ways that you need. And if he is for you, who can be against you? He wants to bless you. So tonight, what I want you guys to do, pray. Ask the Holy Spirit to put it in your heart. Matter of fact, you cannot outgive God. You can't outgive God. Test him. Test him tonight. According to the scriptures, test him. He says it. Test me. See what I want to see. I'm going to do it for your life. I'm going to do it for your life. Try me. See what I want to do with your life. Try me. Amen? Amen. So everybody close your eyes and focus on Jesus and repeat after me. Father, tonight I will test you. It's your word. You always come through. I love you. I love you. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Give it up for Jesus. So guys, we have the giving buckets going around. If you want to give out cash, PayPal, Venmo, Zelle, that's the QR code right there. there. All the ways of giving. Make sure you test God. Make sure you do it from the heart. Amen. God bless you guys in Jesus' name. Give it up for the worship team.
death could not hold you down. You are the risen King. Seated in majesty. Again, praise, praise is so important. It's like every service the Holy Spirit puts it on my heart to talk about praise because we're in a time where spiritual wickedness is at an all-time high. We're in a time period where there's a lot of spiritual warfare. There's a lot of warfare in the spirit realm. There's a lot of angelic and demonic activity because Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Amen. And there's two opposing forces, right? You got the enemy who wants to bring souls to hell. Can you turn up my microphone, please? We have the enemy who wants to take souls to hell. And then we have the kingdom of God, the angelic host that want to minister to those who are called to be heirs of salvation right ministering balls of fire for souls to be saved so it's a it's a war of souls right but you know what's so important for christians to understand is their authority their god-given authority if we if we really understood the authority we have here on earth and in heaven we would open up you guys good perfect timing we would open up our mouth more. If you knew the authority you had as a Christian, you would open up your mouth more and speak more, pray more, praise more. Because if the word of God says that praise delivers us from a spirit of heaviness, anytime that oppression comes on us, let me give you guys an example. You're driving in the car, everything's great. You're on your way to work. You're on your way to your friend's house, your family member's house. Everything's great. You took a shower. You got ready. You're in the car. You're happy. All of a sudden, a crazy thought comes across your mind and you begin to feel rejection. You feel it on your chest. You feel it in your stomach. You begin to get angry. You begin to get depressed. Those familiar feelings come back. Who's experienced that before? And it's out of nowhere. You see, everyone in here should be raising their hand. The ones who are not raising their hand are not conscious to it. We are spiritual beings that need to realize what's going on in the spirit realm. Our mind needs to be focused on the spirit. Amen. Not carnal things, spiritual things. When your mind is focused on spiritual things, you'll overcome spiritual and carnal things. Amen. But when that's that heaviness comes upon you and you don't know why and you start to dwell on that thought instead of digging yourself into a deep hole that causes a, a, a whole reaction of events that don't need to happen you stop 
say this is not from God this is not truth this is lies and you praise him with everything you got I guarantee you amen praise Jesus thank you Jesus I guarantee you that that thought that feeling that whatever you were dwelling on was will leave real quick and you'll be back to coasting and floating in the Holy Ghost amen we got to walk in the spirit amen body of Christ so again what I want to do right now is I want us all together we're going to praise Jesus Christ Yeshua we're going to praise him with everything we have we were just in New York City preaching this I was going to give you guys a quick testimony this last week I pulled three all-nighters praying not to brag and boast because the Lord woke me up he gets all the glory I wanted to sleep but I prayed and it was because of what God wanted to do in New York and it was very successful but it's because of prayer and obedience I'm still not tired because of God's grace because every time the lies come of you're tired I say no I have strength in Christ and I continue to walk it out because of the strength that he gives me amen so if I can praise God with everything I have with everything I got you can too so I want you to not worry about your neighbor don't worry about how ugly you get don't worry about if you, your voice cracks who cares even if you can't dance dance even if you have no hops, jump. It doesn't matter. Amen. People are going to get delivered and healed right now. I guarantee you. So y'all ready? I'm going to count down. Three, two, one. Yeah! Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for healing. Thank you for souls being saved. Ah! Woo! Come on. Keep going. Come on. Another level. Another level. Come on. Yeah. Woo! Five, four, three, two, one. Hey. God man man does it feel does it feel amazing to be a Holy Spirit filled saint oh man I love you who loves Jesus man me too this ministry is full of a bunch of radical Jesus lovers tonight we're going to talk about your God given authority and specifically I'm going to teach on deliverance Who knows they have the authority to cast out devils? Man, look around. Raise your hand if you know that you have the authority. Look at the hands that are not being that are not raised. Crazy, right? All right, y'all can, can put down your hands. If you have the Holy Spirit, if you've given your life to Christ and you're following Jesus, you have the ability to cast out demons. There's nobody that has a special anointing for deliverance. Deliverance is our food it's the children's bread we have the ability to be delivered and I and actually cast out demons man the sons of Sceva were casting out demons and they weren't even followers of Christ there's people who are going to go to hell that cast out demons because they know about the authority in Christ the name of Jesus is powerful hallelujah so if you're a holy spirit filled saint and you don't believe you can cast out demons what Jesus are you following that's not Jesus of the Bible. Jesus of the Bible says that he's given us authority to cast out demons, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. Pray for COVID to go and it's going to go. Pray for deaf ears to open and they're open. I believe the Jesus of the Bible. Do y'all believe the Jesus Christ of the Bible? All right. I believe tonight are going to be activated into their call I believe many evangelists are going to be are going to be touched tonight marked and I believe that Orlando is going to break out in revival like never before and that's what we're praying for amen 
Ya me decide. Real quick, really, really, really quick. Who's from out of the um, out of the state? Anybody from out of the state? Wow, wow, wow. Where are you guys from? PA? Cool, cool, cool. Where are you from? You're from VA? All right. Who else is from out of the state? Where y'all from? South Carolina. South Carolina. Praise God, man. Who else is from out of the state? Where y'all from back there? Ohio. Ohio. Praise God. You said it with confidence. Amen. Where y'all from? Arkansas. Arkansas. Wow. I've never been there. I want to go there one day. Amen. Anybody else? Where y'all from in the back? Huh? Jersey. We were just out there. Praise God. Where you from? Mississippi. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. Amen. That's what's up. Man, I love it because people come from all over to receive that revival fire and bring it back to their city. Man, a lot of people got lit up last night in New York City. We went to, um, we went to Union Square, which is one of the prime time areas in Manhattan. A lot of bars, a lot of clubs. It's kind of close. I think it is the financial district. And what's crazy is I used to actually be out there 10 years ago. When I lived in New York, I used to go out there regularly to the bars and clubs. NYU's right there. I used to be all up in that scene. So to be able to go out there right in the middle where the park is, where all the homeless, drug addicts, weed smokers, the drug dealers, where all of them are posted up, where the darkness is really heavy, to be able to go there, bring a baptism tub, fill it up with like 40 gallons of water from Target, and be able to cast devils out, heal the sick, and see souls saved, man, what an honor it is to be used by God to do that, man. For real. God moved. He moved. He moved. He moved. And man, the enemy tried to stop it, but man, because of prayer and because of faith, God came through. I lost my voice a little bit, not too much, from last night, but it was powerful, man. So, yeah, we're coming to different, we're going, we're going to be going to different cities. We're, we're planning on going to a different city every two weeks for a pop-up revival. We're not going to, we're not going to release it to the day of, till we get there. That's what we did yesterday, and within six hours, there was about 200 people who came out. <clears throat> it was powerful, and people got imparted. I mean, I saw testimonies online of people getting saved at the event and going out and praying for people and healing, breaking out, people giving their life to Christ. Isn't that amazing? They got, they got saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, delivered, and then they went out preaching, preaching about their testimony. You know, we're all called to do that. Look. The apostles, they walked with Jesus for how many years? Three years. But you guys have to remember this. They didn't have the Holy Spirit. They walked with Jesus in the flesh. Am I right or wrong? So they walked with Jesus in the flesh. How do we know that? Because even after seeing all the miracles he did, they still doubted and denied. You need the spirit of truth to know truth. It's deeper than knowledge. It's revelation that comes from within by your spirit, man. So when Jesus Christ died on the cross, was buried and resurrected, and he showed himself onto the, the, the apostles, he breathed on them and they received the Holy Ghost. How many days did Jesus walk with them? 40 days. And then after he walked with them for 40 days, he went past the clouds. How many days did they tarry in Jerusalem before, before they received the power from high? 10 days. So 10 plus 40 is how many days? So for 50 days, they had the Holy Spirit. They had the Holy Ghost for only 50 days. And they were only baptized in the Holy Ghost for 10 days. Straight out of being baptized in the Holy I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They were only baptized in the Holy Ghost for like a few minutes before they went out and won 3,000 souls to Christ. So they had the Holy Spirit without the baptism for 50 days, got baptized in the Holy Ghost, and won 3,000 souls to Christ. They didn't go to seminary school. They didn't sit, sit under a man or woman of God for 15 years. They went out and moved in power because they were endued with power from high. So all of us are called to move in power. To think that you don't have the ability to move in power means that you're downplaying the Holy Ghost. That's offensive. You know, a lot of people pray for more power. How dare you? You have all the power. What you need is more faith. You don't need more power. You got all power. You have the full inheritance that Christ had. Christ, Christ gave you his inheritance. It's your faith that you're lacking. Amen. And we all can grow in faith. 
from faith to faith. Hallelujah. Amen. So to, tonight, people's faith are going to increase. Because I know a lot of people want to cast out demons. There's a huge deliverance movement going on, and I think it's beautiful. Because with so much wickedness in the world, man, it, it needs to be pushed. We don't idolize deliverance, though, okay? We can't take it to, to get religious, but we stay right there, balanced, knowing we have authority. We're going to cast out demons. But we cast out devils because we want souls to be saved. It's a, it's a tool to bring, bring people to Christ. You know, last night, there was Hebrew Israelites. There was witches. There was homeless people. Everyone came surrounded and watched. And in the beginning, I felt the doubt in the air. I began to preach. And the minute someone started getting delivered, everybody who was real angry and doubtful was now like, because they saw a deliverance. And I looked up and I was like, wow, this is, this is, this is why, this is, this God reminded me. He said, you remember in the streets, people who came to Christ because they saw deliverance? This is the way I bring people in. You know, Jesus, he casted out de demons in public. Everyone say public deliverance. He publicly did it. He didn't do it behind closed doors. No, he did it in the public for everybody to see. Because he wanted people to know that the kingdom of God was here, was near, was right there. And that the power of God is real. Supernatural power. We have an ability to move in a power that's out of, the, out of this physical realm. It's not physical. It's supernatural. Say, Everyone say super. super. That means it's out of the natural realm. It's supernatural, right? We're operating in the physical and the spiritual at the same time. What do you think Jesus did when he walked through the wall? When he showed himself on to Thomas? You know he walked through the wall, right? What do you think Philip did when he transported? They were operating in the physical and the spiritual at the same time. Some of you looking at me like, I'm crazy. No, this is real. There are levels in Christ that you can access that will blow your mind, but you can't get there if you can't get the little faith, the beginning stages, to know that you can cast out demons. We should be casting out demons the day we get baptized in the Holy Ghost. You don't got to wait. You know how many people I've personally seen get saved, delivered, baptized in the Holy Spirit, that same day go out and evangelize and casting out demons in the streets? I've seen it a lot of times. Amen. So people tonight are going to break out of doubt, religion. We're going to have a mass deliverance. It's going to be beautiful. Amen. It's already done. Jesus already prepared it. It's going to happen. It's all for the glory of Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. So I'm going to teach, and I'm going to teach from a book that changed my, my life, I would say, that put me, that fast-tracked me in deliverance. It's a book that I bought that I, um, that I, that's, that's, that's near and dear to my heart timeless book. Um, this man of God is in heaven now, but man, to this, this very day, to this very day, he's still winning souls. Derek Prince, mighty man of God, and the book is They Shall Expel Demons. Who's read it? Oh, man. Pull out your phones real quick and just, and, and if you want to, go on Amazon and you can type in They Shall Expel Demons by Derek Prince. If you want to learn deliverance, read this book. I got halfway through this book and I was casting out demons. It's being honest. They shall expel demons. We're going to read from it. I'm going to teach from it. It's a biblically sound book. Powerful man of God with a powerful testimony. He's a father in the faith to many. Many of the deliverance ministers you see right now that are well known learn from Derek Prince as well. He has a lot of teachings um, online as well, a lot of sermons. His voice is very monotonous. Y'all know what that means? Very, like, monotone, like, uh, like, really boring. I remember when I first ran across one of his videos, I was on YouTube. I was watching something totally different. I saw it pop up. This is when, around when I first got saved. And I remember, you know, hearing the voice of the, the Holy Spirit say, you know, click on it. I clicked on it, began to listen to his sermon. I walked away, and I heard the Lord say, go back. And I started watching. Within 15 minutes, I was already getting delivered. And I watched it all the way through, and I was like, man, this guy is powerful. His voice is, is very boring, but he has power behind his words. It's not about how loud you can get or how eloquent or educated you are. It's about the anointing. Everyone say the anointing. You can yell all you want, and nobody's going to listen to you if you don't got power. There's a lot of people with no anointing that are, that are teaching behind the pulpits, and that's why you see no transformation in the church. 
That's scary. Same congregates, same service, nobody changing, nobody being risen up in leadership. That's religion. The Holy Spirit is supposed to transform, is supposed to change, convict. We're supposed to grow. Everyone say grow. If a tree grows, right, it's first planted, the seed is planted, and then it grows. And we're supposed to grow like trees. Why don't we see growth in the body of Christ like we should? It's because people are controlling and keeping people from growth. And then what happens when you, what happens when you stop watering a tree or you stop giving it the nutrients that it's needed? It stops growing and then it dies. And that's, why, that's, that's, that's when we see the lukewarm Christianity in the churches. The, I can go to church on Sunday, but then go live in the world. That's when we see that, and it becomes a normality. That is the worst of the worst. You know that's worse than a witch? At least a witch believes in what she believes in, and she's sold out. But when you're lukewarm, God, why do you think the Bible says he'll vomit you? Because you're nasty. You're, you're disgusting taste. He wants to spit you out of his body. So everyone say, I don't want to be lukewarm. All right, so we're going to start in chapter 11. I want to talk about what are demons. What are demons? When people become aware of the reality of demons, two questions naturally arise. What kind of creatures are they, and what is their origin? So demons are disembodied spirits. We all have a spirit, right? But we have a body. A demon is a disembodied spirit. Demons have personalities, emotions, feelings, but they just don't have a body. Their first choice is a human body. But if they can't enter a human body, they want to enter animals. Monitoring spirits are very real. Monitoring spirits can be in people or animals. It is hard for us to entertain the idea of a person without a body. Nevertheless, even though demons have no bodies, they have all the normally accepted marks of a personality. There's five. They have a will, emotion, intellect, self-awareness, and abilities to, to speak. So let's talk about will. Matthew chapter 12, verse 44. I will return to my house from which I came. This is what the demon who came out of the man said. The demon here exercises its will to make a decision and then follows it up with a corresponding action. Demons are assigned to people and they have a will. And their will is to kill, steal, and destroy. Their will is to take us to hell. There's a lot of people who have had near-death experience and described that when they left their body, there was demons waiting for them who dragged them to hell. They called upon Jesus and God's grace saved them and brought them back and gave them another chance. So when you die, you're either going to be led to heaven or to hell. There's no purgatory. Emotion, number two. James chapter two, verse 19. You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. Even the demons believe that Jesus Christ is the only way. And they tremble. They have emotion. Think about what happens when you get really scared. You tremble. Think about when you're going to go through a situation that makes you nervous. First time you were going to go on a date. First time that you were going to go to college, right? You got nervous. Some of you were trembling. That's because you have emotions and so do demons. Because the minute that the name of Jesus Christ is released from somebody's mouth, they begin to tremble because they know that their destiny is the lake of fire. The lake of fire was not created for us. It was created for the demons, the fallen angels, the Nephilim, the different ranks of demons. They know they're going to the lake of fire. And what they want to do is take us with them. God sends nobody to hell. We make the free will decision to send ourselves to hell by not following him and believing in him. You make your own choice to separate yourself fully from God in hell. We are born into this world separated. 
and we're reconciled when we come back to Christ. That means we once knew him. We come here and we need to come back to him. He knew us before we were formed in our mother's womb. We were spirit beings in heaven sent to earth and now have to go back to him. God gives everyone all the chances they need. But if you decide to reject God your entire life, you make the free will decision for complete and permanent separation. That's what hell is. At least here on earth, his spirit is poured out. So even people who don't have the Holy Spirit residing in them can experience God through love. Everyone say love. Even people who are Satan, Satan worshipers love their children. That feeling they feel for their children, that they'll sacrifice and do anything for them, that is called agape love. They can experience God without knowing God. But when you go to hell, there's nothing. There's no more love. God ain't there. It's the worst of the worst torment. In your mind, all you'll hear or feel or think constantly is all the times that God gave you a chance, all the bad things you did, all the emotions people felt from the bad things you did to them with no forgiveness. Everyone that's in hell right now is not saying, I shouldn't be here. What they're saying is, I know I deserve to be here, but can you please forgive me? Too late. God is a righteous. Everyone say righteous. That means he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a God that's, that he, he makes righteous decisions, the right decisions. There's never a time where he makes a decision and is wrong. He's perfect. So God knows that every person in hell deserves it. He's given them every chance they need. We don't know the intricacies. We don't know the times and all these different things. God knows, and he gives people many chances. So emotion. Trembling is an outward mark of a strong emotion. As I've said, I have seen at times a demonized person, when confronted with the authority of Christ, begin to tremble violently. Violently, This is an outward manifestation of the fear of the demon inside. Who's seen that? At the altar, right? Begin to pray. <laughs> the person goes from normal to start. <laughs> Some of you have been through that yourself. You didn't know why. Why am I feeling scared? Why am I fearful right now? Why am I shaking? What's going on? It's the demon that's inside of you that's trembling because it's about to come out and go back to where it came from. And then as soon as you get delivered, you feel so amazing. You feel the love and the peace and the warmth of God. You feel connected to God. You're like, oh, and then that's when you begin to cry because you feel freedom. Amen. But the demons believe and they tremble. How amazing is that? That our God makes every demon tremble. The highest ranking principality. Every fallen angel. Every low level demon. All the demons that we can't see in the spirit realm. Tremble at the name of Jesus Christ. And even they believe there's one God. Then why are there so many people who don't even believe in a God? Look at this. Number three. Intellect. Demons have knowledge not derived from natural sources. The first time Jesus confronted a demonized man in a synagogue, the demon spoke out of the man and said, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Mark chapter 1, verse 24. It was more than a year before Jesus' own disciples began to realize what this demon had discerned immediately. So they have knowledge that surpasses our knowledge here in the physical realm because they're in the realm of the spirit. Everyone say the realm of the spirit. That's an entirely different realm. Even the Bible says that Jesus became a little lower than the angels. That means he handicapped himself lower than the angels he created by entering a physical body. He knew that by entering a physical body, he could only think with a brain. He could only speak out of a mouth. He could only move by hands and feet. We are handicapped in these bodies, and this is not the way that God intended for us to live. But because of sin, because of iniquity, because of what Adam and Eve did in the garden, 
We lost relationship with God, and we are no longer in glorified bodies. We're not in a body that's, that's one with God. We have to go through this life and go through sickness, go through our body having an expiration date. You know we're just constantly disintegrating every day. From the day you're born, you're already disintegrating. You're going through your body, your, your human body stage. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? That's not the way God intended for us to live, but that's what sin does, allows death. So demons don't operate in this physical realm. They operate in the realm of the spirit. They get intellect that we can't get unless we go to who? So if God is all-powerful, we have direct access to the, the connect, the all-powerful, the one who sees what the demons are doing. So when you don't stay connected to the vine, to the one who knows all, what happens? Demons will outsmart you. I don't care how smart you think you are. You can come up with all the possible, the possibilities. You can, in your mind, you can think this is how it's going to go. And, this, and if you don't pray and humble yourself, these demons will have a field day with you. The lowest ranking demon can outsmart you because they're in the realm of the spirit. But when we connect to the kingdom of heaven, when we connect to God, God sends ministering angels. The Holy Spirit can give you dreams, visions, and words ten, times, ten steps ahead of the devil. I'm so serious. Some of you might be wondering, why do I get all these dreams about people, about me? I don't understand. Some of you have wondered, and then two months later, what you dreamt came to pass. God did not give you the dream to say, you're a very prophetic man and woman of God. Who cares if you're prophetic? Everyone's prophetic. <laughs> God gave you that dream so you can pray. He gave you a warning so that you can take action. And the first step to our action as saints is in the realm of the spirit. We take it to the spirit because we do not war against flesh and blood. But against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. Amen. This is why we have to be spiritual beings. We cannot be carnal. We cannot focus on the physical things that are happening because if we do, we'll get got real soon. That's what the devil wants to do. He wants, you to, he wants to bring you down from the third heaven and bring you either to the second, which is where all the emotions are, or the first. Bring you right down here. Stay right here. Look at what's in front of you. Why do you feel? Look at those emotions you're feeling. I was just explaining this earlier. When you feel that, that weird feeling inside of your body that makes you do something you don't want to do, you need deliverance. I'm going to give you an example. Pornography. That's one of the biggest stumbling blocks for most Christians, men and, men and women. When you get delivered from that spirit of Jezebel, incubus, succubus, perversion, whatever demon it is, when you get delivered from that spirit and that temptation, that attack comes after you, you literally feel like you have control over the situation. You'll sit there and be like, wow, I'm not going to, don't, I don't have to watch porn. But you have a free will decision to say yes or no, right? But people who have an unclean spirit, you almost feel like you have no control over it. You just go to the porn and you might even be crying, I don't want to watch, and you watch the porn. Because your faith is not at a level where you can overcome it and you need deliverance. You know you need deliverance when you cannot overcome a battle by just relying on God, submitting to him, knowing who you are, your identity. When you don't know these things, when you can't fight with the word of God, when you know the word but it's not being effective, when you're like, I'm trying, God, you need deliverance and you need to cry out to Jesus Christ and say, God, deliver me right now because that's a demon. Christians can have demons. You can never be possessed as a Holy Spirit-filled Christian. Possessed means where a demon has full control. Everyone say the body, soul, and spirit. Possession is completely different. You ever see those people downtown who are in the streets tweaking out, possessed? They're not even there. You know it. That demon is fully driving their vehicle all the way. They look at you. You see the demon. What well, the demon is doing, it's just not normal. That's different. Oppression is when you have the ability to fight. It's in the realm of the soul, the mind, will, or emotions, or in the flesh. Someone who has a spirit of infirmity is dealing with a demon in the flesh. God does not want anybody to be sick, because you know that. You need deliverance. Sometimes it's an instant miracle deliverance, or sometimes it's a process. 
But God reveals what he, wants to, what he wants to reveal, what he conceals for his glory. Amen. So you know you need deliverance when you can't stop a certain thing no matter what you try. Some people need to get in the word and actually submit to God. Some people are resisting the devil, but they're not submitting to God. That's when you, be, you become a deliverance junkie. There was a young man of God last night in New York that he kept getting deliverance. Right? I prayed for him, or someone prayed for him. One of the prayer warriors prayed for him. He got deliverance. Cool. And then I'm praying for somebody, and I hear them over there, so these random people casting demons out of, out of him. I had to go over there and say, hey, stop laying hands. I told him, do you even know these people? Be careful who prays for you. And I said, bro, how many times have you been delivered? He said a lot by everybody. Everyone cast demons out. I said, bro, I love you, but what you're, what you're operating in is like a deliverance junkie. Your relationship with God is deliverance because you're dealing with rejection and you don't know his love. The minute I began to just, just minister to him, he began to cry, began to weep and hug me. He got healing. Amen. So we don't focus fully on demons, demons, demons. Because when you do that, I can discern that real quick. When, it's, when, it, when the person does not need deliverance, what they need is the word of God. There has to be a balance. Everyone say balance. When, you, when you've operated in the deliverance ministry and you've seen so many deliverances, you know when it's real and when it's fake. I can tell like this. And it's usually the same people who always want deliverance. You ever seen those type of people? They always like... How do you need deliverance all the time? Do you have a relationship with God? I'm serious. God delivers and heals me in the secret place whenever it's needed. I don't, my wife, if I, I you can ask my wife, I rarely ask her to pray to, for deliverance over me. I ask her to pray for things that I, that I need, that they lay hands on me, babe, pray for this, pray for that. But I'm not saying, cast this demon out of me, I need deliverance right now. No, unless God tells me to, but that's rare. I can go seek the Lord alone, and God will deliver me in the secret place. Deliverance could be a revelation from the word of God that changes my mind. Deliverance could be me just crying of God's goodness, and he heals me of a wound. Deliverance just means freedom. But casting a demon out, if, all your, if, your, if your relationship with God has always cast this demon out of me, that's not a relationship. Amen. Amen. It's like that one person who who messes up in a relationship and, and then they come back and the person forgives them and then all they keep re reminding the person is, about is, hey, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry I did this. I'm so sorry I did this. You ever, see, you ever, you ever seen that, that situation? And you're, the person's like, I forgave you. You're good. I'm so sorry. I'm so, it's like, what type of relationship is that? When are you going to get over that and actually embrace the love of the relationship? Amen. We got to embrace the love of God, not deliverance, deliverance, deliverance. De deliverance is real. Let me tell you something. Unbelievers need deliverance so they can believe. Amen. You know how many unbelievers I went to and I prayed for? They started manifesting a demon, got delivered, and gave their life to Christ. Amen. You know how many unbelievers were seeing a public deliverance, and because they saw the power of God, felt the power of God, they came and surrendered at the altar? Amen. Deliverance is for believers and unbelievers. That's why Jesus casted out demons publicly. There was Pharisees, believers, unbelievers, all types of people, witches, war, all types of people were watching. Because once you see a supernatural, a supernatural miracle, because that's the working of miracles. Deliverance is in the category of the working of miracles. When you see a miracle like that, how are you going to say that God ain't real? Amen. Amen. But as Christians, we get deliverance when we need it, but we don't focus on it. That's why Jesus said, do not rejoice that the demons submit to my name, but that your names are written in the book of life. You're going to go to heaven. What he was saying is don't, don't sit here and party and, and go all crazy because demons are coming out. Be happy and rejoice and be joyful that you're going to heaven. And then he glorified the Father. Look at this. Self-awareness, number four. When Jesus asked the demonized man, what is your name? A demon answered on behalf of itself and the other demons. My name is Legion. Everyone say Legion. For we are many. Mark 5, 9. The demon was aware both of its own identity and that of the other demons occupying this man. Jezebel is a system. Leviathan is a system. Demons come in with a system, an operation. That's why the Bible says when a demon leaves, it gets seven more other wicked spirits. Demons come in packs, systems. And they're well aware of the operation that's operating inside the person. They're well aware. 
So when someone gets delivered from a Jezebel, they're not just getting delivered from the spirit of Jezebel. They're getting delivered from that entire system. And what demons do Jezebel come, does Jezebel come with? We can read in the word and learn about her characteristics. Witchcraft, lust, control, idolatry, right? Murder. These are suicide. Elijah got suicidal, right? Jezebel causes you to doubt your calling. Jezebel tries to silence the voice of the prophet. She wants people to shut up and stop preaching against her. Jezebel wants all the attention. She put on all that makeup and tried to seduce Jehu. She comes with seduction. This is an entire operation. Jezebel wants to lead. You ever see someone come to the, the church or they come to a ministry and within two minutes they think they're, they're supposed to be leading? They're always speaking. Super prophetic. Don't want to serve, don't want to clean bathrooms, but they want to lead. That's a Jezebel spirit. She wants the limelight. When she doesn't get the limelight, she gets angry. And Jezebel always needs a Ahab. Whenever you see a Jezebel spirit, there's an Ahab around. Because Jezebel spirits cannot operate without an Ahab. You ever see those relationships where the woman is, is, is running the man? She got the man unlocked, the man is asleep. He don't know what's going on. Right? He don't know what's going on. My, I love my wife. She's an amazing woman. That's a Jezebel Ahab operation. You can see it from a mile away. When the man is supposed to be the leader of the relationship, the man is supposed to be the covering. The man is supposed to be lifted up because she's the helpmate. Woman of God out there, I love all of you. I love men of God too. But you should know biblical order in marriage. Because when you do, God will bless your family. But the, I'm telling you. And that's why the Jezebel spirit is a very stubborn spirit. And sometimes when you're praying and the Jezebel spirit manifests, and how do we know a Jezebel spirit manifests? It's the same wicked laugh every time. She's very stubborn. She'll begin to manifest and she's like, it's like this weird laugh, like a witch. Up oh, there she goes. And how do you know she comes out? It's that same screeching, like, like, like yell, like that, ah! where it sounds like so many people at once. It's a, wicked, it's a wicked yell. But sometimes people need a process of deliverance to get delivered from her because they haven't surrendered certain things. They haven't surrendered the seduction that they like to move in because they're rejected. The seduction makes them feel good when, they, when men look at them or women look at them. They want to wear certain clothing on purpose so that men can, or women can look at them. That's a seducing spirit. You ever see somebody that you just think they move in such seduction when they look at you, they, the way they, they smile, and you feel the pull like, bro, what the heck is that? Right? You're like, yo, what, what the heck? Am I being tempted right now? And that's a seducing spirit. The eyes, a Jezebel spirit, the eyes are real glossy. You ever seen that the eyes are real and very captivating and they pull you in. I know when I see a Jezebel spirit because when I see it, it tries to come at me first with the, and I just look straight at it deep into the soul. And the minute I do that, head down, head down. Before I used to get so like, oh, babe, you see that? Ugh. But now I'm able to, mm, and look deeper and that spirit will go down. And the person won't understand why they feel what they feel and put their head down. Because that spirit will give them the emotion of, stop talking to him, walk away. You see, when demons know that you know that you know that you know, they start running away from you. All right, number five, the ability to speak. In the first three gospels and also in Acts, we see several examples of demons able to speak through the vocal organs of the person they are occupying. They could never answer questions and carry on a conversation. Normally, we regard the ability to speak as a distinctive mark of personality. Demons can speak through people. Did y'all know that? Sometimes they'll come to the altar and they'll, I don't want to go. That's not the person. That's the actual spirit that doesn't want to go. I've spoken to people. I've done many different um, interviews after deliverances. 
just to get just to pick their brain. And when someone's really getting delivered, they're like, man, I wasn't even there. It was like I was outside of my body watching myself. It was crazy. Who's experienced that? Well, you're like, bro, I was outside of my body. What? That, like, that, that wasn't me speaking. I'm sorry. I'm, so, I'm like, bro, you're good. I've seen demons start cursing people out, try to run away. I've seen demons with, like, give the person supernatural strength. One time we were, uh, we were praying for a woman, a woman of God for deliverance in her home. And I'll never forget that she manifested the spirit of Jezebel. And, and, and it, was, it was Baal also operating. It was so wicked that she was able to pick up three men. Yep. My wife had to literally put her knees on top, like on her back, like try to hold her. I was holding her legs. Two other men of God were holding, one was holding the leg, the arm. We were literally, and she got up, ah, like got up. And we had to cast it, like come out, come out. And when it finally came out, she fell. Blood came out of her mouth. She threw up, all types of stuff, and got freed. She was cutting herself and everything, bow worship. Had no idea. Demons can give people supernatural strength. I've seen times where the demon will take somebody and, like, disfigure their, their, their body in a way that it's, it's, not, it's just not normal. They start walking all crazy, like, on, like, going, like, you ever seen that in the movies? That stuff is very real. When someone, when so, I've seen it with people who are, like, are, are borderline possessed. People that have, been, this, this, is, this is the main, this, uh, when I see when I meet a Christian who was once on fire for God, but has been in the world for like 10, 12 years, they're, they're like the most wicked deliverances. When you pray for them, that demon comes up and speaks, doesn't want to let him go. That's why when the Bible says the demon gets seven more wicked spirits and tries to come back and enter, that is very real. God has a grace period. Everyone say grace period. I don't want you guys to get scared, but you should have the fear of the Lord. You know what the fear of the Lord is? Realizing that without God, you're going to get God. Realizing that without God, you can become blinded. You can go from thinking that Jesus Christ is everything to literally thinking he's not even real. You can go from believing in the gospel to believing in witchcraft. I've seen it. I've seen people who were on fire worshipers go from worshiping the Lord in the anointing, powerful men of God. Go from that to believing that all religions can, can bring you to heaven and leave the church. All because they didn't give up certain things that they needed to sacrifice. God kept telling them, stop watching the porn. Stop watching the porn. They would come up, get deliverance, go back to the porn. When you get delivered from a demon that's causing you to watch porn, you have the ability to stop now. If I was addicted to porn my entire life when I got delivered in Christ and never went back, if I can do that, why can't you? You have a free will choice. Everyone say free will. In Christ, it's going to be a fight. It's a fight of faith. There's never a time in Christ where it's super easy and you're just, everything's great and, and, and candy land. We're not in heaven yet. We're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. But we're still here as foot soldiers on this earth fighting against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in high places. And the beautiful thing about it all is that we have authority over everything. We do. That when we pray, things shift. When you know that, when you have faith and you pray, you don't have to pray for 10 hours. You can say it, you can pray for 10, 15 minutes and shift everything for the day. God doesn't want us praying 15 hours a day. God does not want us oh, always praying. That's, that could be religious. God wants us to be in the field winning souls. Some people all are called to be prophetic intercessors, and God will tell them to pray longer than most people. But that's their calling. That's different. But God has a plan and a destiny. He has a purpose for everybody. How can we fulfill our destiny if we're always praying in the secret place? Let's take it deeper. You know what's a form of prayer? Always in your mind and heart, staying focused on God anywhere you go. Being able to be in a room with a whole bunch of worldly people and still in the spirit be focused on Jesus and having a full-on conversation. That's prayer. Secret place devoted time with God is beautiful. It's very beautiful. It's intimate, right? 
Think about a wife and a husband, intimacy alone. But if I go with my wife in public, sometimes we don't have to even say anything to each other and we know exactly what we're thinking about what's going on. Because we're connected, we're one in the flesh. God is more connected with me than I am with my wife and more connected with her than I am with her, right? He lives inside of me. Everyone say, inside of me. Jesus lives inside of you. Hallelujah. So we have to focus on Christ at all times. And when it comes to deliverance, if you don't have a relationship with God, you will not be able to cast out demons. You know why? Because in deliverance ministry, it's very prophetic. As you're praying for somebody, God is going to speak to you and tell you to cast out certain demons and do certain things. Did you know that? You guys see at the altar when I'm praying and I say, wait, you need to forgive. I didn't just come up with that. I literally heard the Lord say, she hasn't forgiven. The Lord will show me a vision or speak to me about something specifically for that person to get freed. You know how I learned that? Deliverance ministry. I didn't try to learn how to get the word of knowledge. I was casting out devils, and I was praying to God, asking God what's going on, and God would begin to speak to me. And I would pray for people, and they would get delivered quicker. What I used to do is go through this deliverance prayer that Derek Prince has at the end of that book, which is very powerful, really good for new beginners in deliverance. It's at the end. You identify all these different spirits. People can renounce it. Powerful. But as you begin to grow in deliverance ministry or just in Christ in general, God will tell you, bam, 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 delivered. Amen. Amen. But tonight, we're going to go through that prayer. I want to go through the entire prayer with you guys so that everyone can let go of everything. Because I believe there's people in here who need deliverance. Who came here for deliverance? It's a lot of people. Praise God. So we're going to go through this deliverance prayer. We're going to go through the entire thing. And I want you guys to really focus on Christ. I don't want you guys to feel like you're separated from Jesus. Like, like Jesus ain't, ain't with me and I'm, the, I'm just this demonized person who's terrible and, and I need to go to hell. No, I want you guys to, to focus and have the heart and the mind that Jesus Christ literally loves you and wants you to leave here freed. He's tired of those demons blocking your, your destiny. They're annoying to him. If Jesus Christ overcame every demon on the cross, why do you still have demons? If Jesus Christ died for all your sin and disarmed every principality and power, why are you walking oppressed still? One of the main reasons is because you don't want to sacrifice. Last night I said this. Number one, fornication. Many people repented of fornication last night and gave up relationships that they shouldn't have been in. It was powerful and got delivered, set free, filled with the Holy Ghost. Couldn't speak in tongues before, blasting tongues, baptized in water, left there different because they sacrificed and they gave, they gave those things up. You know what the cross represents? Sacrifice. If the Bible says we're to take up our cross daily, that means every day we sacrifice. What is sacrifice? Something that we don't want to give up in our flesh that we give up because we love God. A sacrifice could be giving up a relationship that you know you're not supposed to be in. Some people have justified those relationships. I could be in this relationship. God ain't tripping. I'm going to marry her one day anyways. We only fornicate once every three weeks. We'll be all right. That's already a relationship that's built off the devil. No foundation in Christ. When you sacrifice, separate yourself, let that person know you're committing to God and they should too, God will bless you. And if that person's supposed to be married and all that stuff, it'll happen. But God might save your butt. Because when you're in fornication, you're blinded. Everyone say blinded. blinded. You think that this is the one. I love this person. This is the one forever. I've seen people who did not take their time, got married too quick. And ended up getting divorced because they didn't seek God about that person. It was their flesh. It was their feelings. You know marriage is forever. You know God hates divorce. There's too much remarrying and divorcing in the body of Christ because people are not seeking God. Yes, God has grace. 
But you know the consequences that come behind these type of things are devastating. Years of having to wait before you can actually be used in ministry. Suffering unnecessarily. Kids dealing with issues that they didn't have to deal with. You know adultery, divorce, remarriage affects the children too. You know fornication really affects the children. You have children out of wedlock. But you don't want to repent because of your selfishness. Now you're cursing your child. This is real. Y'all want me to keep it real. You want me to be candy sugar-coated. I can keep it real with y'all, but people get mad at me. They get mad. You're religious. That's mean. That's not loving. No, it's the truth. I know this because of deliverance ministry. You know how many devils I cast out when people, when people start re actually repent of fornication? When they break that legal right, everyone say legal right. The only reason that demon has access in your temple, has the ability to be inside of you, is because legal right. I'm going to talk about number two, rejection. Uh, people that are dealing with rejection don't want to admit they got rejection. Oh, he just doesn't understand. I'm all right. Everything's great. Yep, you got rejection. Rejection is one of the biggest killers of people in ministry. Because if you can't overcome rejection and be delivered and healed, you're going to always think everyone's against you. You're going to isolate yourself, always have paranoia, pride. Because you know what covers rejection? Pride. Who remembers that feeling when you were in middle school and you got bullied or you got your mom or your dad did this to you or your dad left the home or your mom left the home or whatever happened? Who remembers that feeling in elementary, middle, whatever it was, that, that, one, that one time that you got really rejected and hurt by somebody? Bro, it's everybody in here. Remember how bad it felt? You felt like it was the end of the world and you're just walking and you're like, oh, it feels like somebody took a knife and just boom in your stomach. And then the feeling doesn't go away. It starts to get stronger and stronger. You know what I'm talking about, right? And you're sitting there trying to hold this. Literally, you're trying to hold that. You're trying to tense up and hold your breath because of how powerful it is. That's the spirit of rejection. And if you don't get delivered and healed from that, that thing will dwell in you and manifest whenever something is supposed to actually be divine from God. That spirit will break up true relationships that you're supposed to keep because of ignorance, because of pride. People don't want to feel that feeling, so they get prideful. Pride comes and covers it. It speaks in your ear. And then you begin to say, nah, I'm right, they're wrong. The minute you have that mentality flowing through you, God can't use somebody like that. Those are the people, 30, 40 years in the church, never used. Super prophetic, super anointed, got a lot of faith, and then you wonder why. What's up with you? Because they won't overcome the spirit of rejection. Rejection is a process. You get delivered from the demon, then you need to get healing. You know how God heals you with rejection? It takes you back to those times. How do I know this? Because I went through it. Everything I'm telling you all right now with the fornication, I had to sacrifice. With the rejection, I had to realize I was wrong. All these things I'm telling you, I had to go through. That's why I can preach it. Amen. Amen. I will never sit here and preach something to you that I have no experience with. When I, got, when I came to Christ, I had to look at my wife, who, who, she, she was my girl, who's pregnant with my seven-month-old child, and say, we are not together, we're not sleeping in the same room, and I'm going to start looking for apartments and leave. You know how much that hurt me to know that my firstborn child that my firstborn child probably will be raised without, without having that mother and father bond. That, that, that another man might come and marry her and my child have to be raised by him. And I had to wait and I had to seek God and say, God, what do you want me to do? I had to seek God and I waited. Even after she got saved, I waited. I waited and I waited until God gave me the green light. So if I sacrificed, you got to sacrifice too. Some of you, are not, you don't even have a kid on the way. You're, just, you're with a girlfriend or boyfriend because you like them. Do you really want to risk your future, your destiny, your actual wife and husband that God has planned for you, all because you like the feeling of being loved when it ain't even love, it's lust? You, I'm being real. And people can get up and leave. I still love you. It's honestly spiritual because you want love from another person except, being, except going straight to God and being satisfied by his love. You know the love of God is more satisfying than any man or woman can give you? Amen. Because you know even when you get married, 
if you still haven't overcame that rejection, you're going to go to your wife or husband and seek, lo seek love from them. And the minute they say something wrong or do something wrong to you, now your whole world ends and you get divorced. That's how people get divorced. Because how dare they? Now they're the enemy. I thought that that was the person you love. That was the one you said was supposed to be to the end. That's because it's a spirit operating. We got to get freed before we try to do anything that we think is right. Them demons can manifest inside of you. And when they manifest, it's through a feeling. Everyone say feeling. feeling. You know it's in the soul when it's an emotion. When it's something like, like you're just like, something so simple can be said to you, but it affects you so much. Everyone's been through that, right? Something so simple that you know is not even that serious, but it affects you so much. You get angry, you get depressed, you get rejected, you get lustful, whatever it is. You're like, what is wrong with me? Some of you need deliverance from that spirit of lust. You've been, you, you walk in the gym and all of a sudden you get lustful and, and, and you have to leave and you wonder what's wrong with me. There's a spirit operating inside of you. Bro, we got to get delivered so we can go deliver others. Amen. Amen. Do you want to be the blind leading the blind or do you want to be led by the spirit and help others be led by the spirit? So tonight, people are going to get delivered from demons. People are going to get healed. I feel like the silence, and not, not because it's actually silence, but like the spiritual silence in the room of people like, yo, I need deliverance. Who right now is like, man, I need deliverance? Raise your hand. Oh, man, it's about to be real tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good. So what I, oh, one more thing. Forgiveness. Oh, my goodness. If you don't forgive, you're not going to heaven. Point blank, period. If you can't forgive the person who hurt you, you can't make it to heaven. God will never say to somebody at the gate on judgment day, I'm going to let you go to heaven even though you couldn't forgive them. No, the Bible says if you don't forgive, he will not forgive you. It doesn't matter what you did for the church. It doesn't matter how many homeless people you fed. It doesn't matter how many hours you prayed, how many people you won to Christ. If you can't forgive somebody who's hurt you, you already lost the entire meaning of the gospel. That means you're preaching and working for a God that you don't know. Because when you understand how God forgave you, you understand the good news. And you'll be able to multiply that on people who hurt you and hurt others. If you can't forgive, you lost the entire, every, the whole meaning of being a Christian. And I always give this, this explanation for forgiveness to help people forgive. Have you ever done anything wrong? Who in here has done somebody wrong? Man, everyone should be raising their hand. Praise God. If you've done someone wrong, imagine what they felt like. Imagine all the people you did wrong and what they felt like. You didn't care that much because it's you. You don't care because you're like, it's not that serious. Yeah, I gossiped about them. They, find out, they found out it's not that serious. They should forgive me in a day or two. But you don't know how they felt. You don't know what demon was operating inside of them or around them to cause them to go into a state of rejection. You don't know. You don't know what spiral it took them down because of your gossip. You don't know who. You robbed that person because you needed that money. It was only 20 bucks. It's all good. You don't know what, what, what trauma it brought up from the past. You don't know. We've all done wrong to people. You lied to somebody. You don't know. You don't know. The minute you begin to sin, you're operating, you're, op you're, you're moving for the kingdom of God. The kingdom, I'm, not, I'm sorry, the kingdom of, of Satan. <laughs> I'm sorry, I repent. The kingdom of the devil. The minute you do something like sin, like lie, like cheat, you're operating from the king, for the kingdom of Satan. And when you operate for the kingdom of Satan, Satan begins to move. He can't move in a demonic operation unless there's an initial attack. So what I mean by that is demons, they scheme and they plan and they plot. They look at generational lines. So they see a person, they see 10, 20 generations back. Okay, I see the familiar spirits that have been operating. They, they, they know what spirits have been operating and bringing certain generations down to hell and what, which ones were operating that weren't successful. And they know exactly which spirit is going to affect you the most. So if your mother, your grandmother, and your great-grandmother could not overcome rejection, guess what familiar spirit's coming after you? Rejection. So when they know... In order for that spirit of rejection to, to attack this person, 
there has to be an actual assignment created. So who do they go to? The person closest to you. They want to hit you as hard as they could. And if you have not been delivered and healed and you don't know Jesus, you are a walking target. Wait, they're now contemplating going to church? Now we got to hit them. Who's the closest person to them? Oh, the girl that they're talking on the phone with every night that they like? Perfect. That girl's a whole open door because she doesn't know Jesus either. Now that girl goes and cheats on the guy. He finds out that spirit of rejection rocks you. Now you're suicidal. Now you're down a whole spiral for three years. Got to come to the church house and the man or woman of God to tell you, you were in fornication anyways. That person didn't love you. They lusted. You were lusting. Repent. When the entire time all you had to do was repent, get delivered and healed. You see how the devil works? These demons are moving in the spirit realm with strategy. They're planning every day something new to attack you with. And what's so beautiful about it all is that there's nothing that they can do without getting permission from God. So God allows it. Woo! He allows it. Pray, everyone say, praise God. praise God. Because what that does is it brings you to him. It breaks you. It brings you down to where everything that you used to go to to feel good ain't making you feel good. You're drinking. You're smoking. You're still depressed. Now you're locked up. All these things are happening. You're like, I can't even smoke and drink. I'm in prison. God, I need you. Holy Ghost comes, delivers you, heals you. Now you're a minister of the gospel, preaching the nation. You see how it goes? God allows these things. Romans 8, Romans 8, 28. All things work for the good of those who love God that are called according to his purpose. God will allow things to happen to reveal things. you praying and saying, God, I want to be used by you. You're in Christ. All of a sudden, your mother or father. Cause rejection again, and you're wondering why. You think it's a whole attack when it's God actually revealing the deeper things that you need to get healed from. Praise God. You see, it's being spiritual minded. When you're carnal, you'll look at every situation and say, why me? Carnal minded people are selfish. Why me? But me, because you can't take that feeling. You're taking the feeling and trying to justify it with pride instead of saying, I shouldn't be feeling like this. I'm going through this situation, and it sucks, but I shouldn't. The Bible says that I'm supposed to have peace, love, and joy through anything. How was Paul murdered? How were these, people, these apostles getting their heads chopped off, hung upside down on crosses, and still praising God? They had, a, they had something that I don't have. I'm over here rejected because someone didn't call me when they were supposed to. God, I need freedom. And you're not worried about the situation. You say, praise God for the situation. I need healing, Lord. That's a spiritual-minded person, and that is a vessel God can use. Simple Christianity. But when everything is defense, <laughs> how's God going to send you to New York City, to China? You know how many times we got tested out there in New York? I can sit there and tell you, but I don't need to. I'm not going to glorify the devil. But we overcame it with love and joy and peace. Hey, hey, we're going to move in the spirit of God. You ain't going, oh, we're going we're gonna to make this thing happen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So tonight, people need to get delivered and healed. Some of you already know what spirit you need deliverance from. You right now, like, I <laughs> see, you, you already know. Pray, that's good. That's the whole point of this message is to convict you. So if you want to cast out devils, you need to be delivered first. Because casting out demons while still having demons, and I can say that because that was me, is very backwards. <laughs> because that thing will bring you through a lot of um, deliverance. Let's put it that way. You don't got to go that route. Wisdom. Everyone say wisdom. wisdom. Wisdom is being able to have the strategy on how to act, what to do. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, three things that we should always be praying for. When God gives you the knowledge about a situation, you need understanding so that you have the mind and the heart of him to understand why everything's going on. So let's say, for instance, the knowledge of your child smoking weed when you never thought they smoked weed. You find out that's knowledge. Now you need spiritual understanding. Okay, they're probably smoking because they feel rejected, right? Now you need the wisdom to be able to handle the situation 
in a godly manner that will be effective. And the root, the goal of the of, of what you're gonna do is for that per, that that child to stop smoking weed, right? So, someone who doesn't have wisdom does this: You're smoking weed, you piece of crap. Give me this weed. You're punished. Boom, boom. Now the kid's more rejected. But someone with wisdom, they got weed. Okay, let me go take him out for ice cream. Hey, son, how you doing? I just want to talk to you about a few things and how much I love you. Now the kid's at the ice cream parlor with chocolate, with chocolate ice cream all over his face crying because you had wisdom and listened to the Holy Ghost. Now you can cast that demon out of your child. You see what I'm saying? Religion don't got wisdom. Whole bunch of knowledge with no love. Knowledge puffs up, but love does what? Edifies. Somebody knows the Bible. Praise God. So knowledge without love is religion. But when you have knowledge with understanding, with the wisdom, every situation is like a whole operation with you and God. And the outcome is to see that person freed or you freed or whatever it is. Amen. Amen. We got to get spiritual body of Christ. All these witches and warlocks are super spiritual. They're more spiritual minded than most Christians. How? How? Because the body of Christ is not waking up. It's just like a Sunday service. Hallelujah. Cool. Let me go back to my carnal state of mind. Let me just go to church so I can make it to heaven. What? Are you going to church to make it to heaven? You should be coming to church because you already are in heaven, seated in heavenly places, and you want to be used by God because you got a destiny. Church is not just to barely make it. So what I want to do is I want to walk all of you through this deliverance prayer from Derek Prince. Who, who's ready for that? Okay. But first, sorry. Not sorry. I'm going to give the gospel. because The reason I said sorry is because I can feel a lot of people are, are like ready. Like they're like, I need deliverance right now. But first, I want to give you guys the good news, because some of you need deliverance, but you haven't given your life to Christ. And to get demons casted out of you without surrendering to God, that's, a, that's, that's like giving someone the wrong medicine. They can overdose and die, right? Okay, so listen. So who has sinned in here? Raise your hand. The wages of one sin is what? Where? Death where? And where? Hell. Because we're all going to die, right? All right? Our body is going to have an, has an expiration date. We're going to die from this physical realm. Praise God we're going to die. And we're going to go to heaven. Praise, all right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So listen to this. If you sinned, one sin sends you straight to hell. Can I ask you a question, woman of God? Have you ever lied before? So then you're considered a what? A what? If I lie, a liar. A liar. Right. Have you stolen before? So you're considered a what? Theft. Thief. Thief, right? Have you ever cheated? You. Have you ever cheated on a test? So you're considered a what? Cheater. Okay. Cheater. Thief. Liar. Is what you're considered based on what you've done. So the wages of one sin, you're supposed to go to hell. One sin sends you to hell. That means we all are supposed to go to hell, including myself. And then the Bible says if you think that you're without sin, you're what? You're deceived. So how do we get saved? What's the good news? How can I get saved? How, do, how can I get saved when I had all this, the sex with all these women, being sexually perverse, robbing, stealing, cheating? How can I be saved if one sin sends me to hell? I got good news for you. Good news. Y'all want the good news? You know, you know when someone tells you, I got bad news and good news, and you're like, give me the good news first, you get excited? I'm about to give you some exciting news. Is that everybody on this planet that ever lived and ever will live is supposed to go straight to hell because one sin sends you to hell and everyone sins. But there's one who came that was sinless. Sin entered the world when Adam and Eve in the garden ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God never intended for us to have an expiration date on our body or to even live in a sinful nature. Adam and Eve only knew good. Imagine if all you knew was good. You couldn't even comprehend what evil was. Imagine that. You couldn't even comprehend it. 
You ever been ice fishing? So right now, you can imagine what it's like to ice fishing, but you can't really comprehend what ice fishing is like somebody who has, right? So like Adam and Eve, they couldn't comprehend it. They didn't know what evil was. All they knew was good. So God told them to, they can eat from every tree, but, so he gave them free will, but he said, but don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And what did Eve do? Satan entered a snake. You know why? Because Satan is a spirit. Everyone say spirit. He's a fallen angel. Remember I said earlier, demons can either operate in human vessels or animals, right? So Satan had to, uh, to enter a physical vessel to speak to Eve, who was also in a physical vessel. And the snake spoke to her and said, you can be like God and know what evil is too. You can know good and evil just like God and Eve. Because she came from the rib of Adam. Because she was Adam's helpmate. Because she didn't have access to a certain part of the garden that Adam have, had. She right there had envy and was, man, I can be like God who's even higher than Adam? Where that tree at? And she ate. When she realized what she did, she brought down her, 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 her the person supposed to be helping. She brought down her covering. Hey, you can eat from it too. And they ate. And then what happened? Eyes opened. And now they understood what evil was. And they realized that they did evil and they sinned. That's when death entered the world, the spirit of death. Now, Adam and Eve, expiration date on their body. They're going to die. They realized they were naked, got the leaves of fig trees, right? Covered themselves. That's when death entered, sin entered, and relationship with God was lost. Before they had relationship with God and they walked with him in the cool of the day, right? Adam, right? That means they had a body, but their body was satisfied by complete relationship with the Holy Spirit. They had no desires for fleshly things. They didn't desire to be angry, curse, cheat, fornicate, or lust, or whatever it is. You know, God told them to be fruitful and multiply before they fell. I'm going to say it again. God told them to be fruitful and multiply before they fell. So God actually had a plan of multiplication on earth without evil. But they ate. Now generations went by. Adam and Eve died. Their children died. Their children died. And the prophets throughout this entire time period, the prophets from Israel, the ones that God would call or the Holy Spirit would come upon them for ministry, would speak and prophesy about the future and what the Messiah, the Christ, would do, what he would do, what he would do, how he would be, be put on a tree. A book of Isaiah talks about it, Ezekiel, different books in the Old Testament, specific messianic prophecies, prophecies foretold events in the future about the Messiah. And they kept waiting. And the Israelites, they got tired, bro. What's your name? Nick, I'm going to use you tonight. Praise God. They got tired. I'm going to act like I'm preaching the gospel to you. You know why they got tired? You ever, you ever worked a job that you hate? Yeah. When did you work a job that you hate? Um, in the kitchen, Publix. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> so you worked in the Publix kitchen. You hated it, but why did yeah. you work? Why did you get up every day? What motivated you? Uh, make money. Money to survive, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So the Israelites were under the law. They were under works. They were working for a God they had no relationship with. It's like working a job to make it to heaven, but not even knowing who your, bo not even knowing who your boss is. It sucks. Yeah. Everyone say it sucks. it sucks. The law sucks. The law is good, but we can't abide by it. So working works. Being under the law sucks. So the Israelites would constantly be working, sacrifices of animals and agriculture crops, always listening to all these specific detailed laws. There was many tithes. There was many feasts, all these different things, constantly working. And they would get tired and they would rebel. And they would hear about their friend who was, who was worshiping Baal. And their friend would come up to them, bro, there's a God I'm worshiping. All you got to do is sacrifice your firstborn child and all your crops will be more fruitful than ever before. You'll have like six different harvests in one season. Back then, that meant a lot of money. And they'd be like, yeah, forget Yahweh. I got to keep doing all that. Forget that. Where's Baal at? Start cutting themselves. Prostitution in the temple. Same things we're seeing now. 
What do you think the, the, the nightclubs are? That's a modern temple of Baal. What do you think the abortion clinics are? Children being sacrificed on the molek. And then the prophets will be risen up. Repent. Repent, Nineveh. Repent. Or these things are going to, right? Jonah actually thought that it was already set and done. That he was telling to, that he was going to tell them to repent and they were going to all die. But God changed his heart because God is, an, is a relational God. That's how much he loves us. So they were under the law. Come back to God. Leave God. Come back to God. That's what fornication actually is. It's, it's actual adultery. Crazy, right? Fornication could be having sex out of marriage or actually worshiping false gods. So finally, Jesus Christ came, born of a virgin, born of a virgin, risen up. They were always, they were always trying to kill him since before he was even born because Satan knew. 30 years old, got baptized in the Jordan River. The Holy Ghost descended upon him like a dove. He had power to cast out devils, heal the sick, raise the dead. He went from city to city for three years doing that, proving that he was something they've never seen before, someone that they could not comprehend in their mind. Who, who is this guy and how is he so different? He starts to preach and teach, and I don't understand how. I really want to listen to him. He was anointed. Everyone say anointed. And guess what his name means? The anointed one. Power. Everyone say power. power. The fullness of God bodily. You want to know what the Father Yahweh looks like? Look at Jesus. You want to know his personality? Look at Jesus. How would the Father look if he came to earth? God, an all-powerful spirit. Look at Jesus. Because Jesus is the fullness of God in a human body. Amen. And he went three years doing all those things, and then finally he had to fulfill everything that he was called to do. And the last thing he had to do was get kidnapped. Get arrested. He got physically tortured. The Bible says he was mold and was unrecognizable. Do you know what that means, unrecognizable? You see me right now? You recognize who I am. Imagine I came back and you couldn't even recognize who I was because my flesh was hanging off my body. Because my face was so deformed. Because I looked. You're like, who is that? Is that? Who is that? Is, what the? That's how beaten he was in the flesh. And because he went through all that physical torture... But never backed down and gave up. By his stripes we are healed. Because he overcame the flesh. <laughs> Praise God. And then he went on the cross. And when he went on the cross, he took all, you guys know, he took all the sin of the past, present, and future on, on his back. So he went through physical torment and he went through spiritual. Why do you think he said, God, why have you forsaken me? You know, the Bible says he, be, he, who, he who knew no sin became sin so that we can become the righteousness of God in him. He who was perfect, holy, and blameless became sin. God the Father looked at Jesus Christ the same way he looks at you when you're in sin. All the sins you'll ever commit or anyone will ever commit, he looked at Jesus Christ as a wicked sinner. And the Holy Ghost couldn't be on a vessel like that. And he, why have you forsaken me? Because he, God had to watch me. You know what it says? The Bible says it pleased the Father. It pleased him because now a perfect sacrifice. He who knew no sin became sin. Wow. So that we can become the righteousness of Christ. He became sin so that God can look at us the same way he lived. He took all our sin on his back so that when we believe in him, God will see us how he lived on this earth, sinless. So he took all the spiritual debt on his back and he went on the cross and said, it's finished. Everyone doubted. At this point, everyone thought he's not the Messiah. He's not the anointed one. He's not the Christ. He died just like every other human. Day one, day two, day three goes by. He rose from the dead. He showed himself onto his disciples 500 witnesses, 500 eyewitnesses. He walked the earth, and then he went past the clouds and is right now in his glorified body, seated at the right hand of the Father. And he sent the Holy Spirit. He sent the Holy Ghost so that now we can have the same power, the same inheritance, 
the same peace of heaven, the same peace of glory residing in us now. Look, listen to this, brother. We tried to become like God, and we fell. He came here, became like us, never did what we do so that we can now become like him. He gave us exactly what we wanted the entire time. We tried to skip the process and God said, I got you. Let me clean it up and give you exactly what I was going to give you from the start. <laughs> you don't think God wanted us to become like him from the start? But we decided to want to know what evil, evil was. Crazy. So now the good news is you've sinned and you're supposed to go to hell. But if you believe in the one who is sinless, he's your Lord, he's your Savior, he rose from the dead. And you repent and turn away from all your sin. You know what that means? Turn away from practicing sin. You will fall. But there's a difference between someone who practices sin and someone who falls. I'll give you the example. Do you play basketball? Stand up real quick. Come on, stand up. What's your name again? Kenneth, you said? Uh, Nick. Nick, I'm sorry. Why did I say Kenneth? Let's get Nick Ross. Yeah, yeah. Nick Ross. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. You play ball, right? Oh, yeah. Every day? Um, on the weekends, actually. So you're a basketball player. Yeah. With an ER, you're a, you're a baller. You're a player. Yeah, yeah. I play against other, yeah. Pra okay, praise God. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Now me, if I told you I play basketball one time a year, what would you say? Would you say I'm a basketball player? Ah, uh, not really. I'm not, because I don't play <laughs> regularly, right? No, not for, yeah. So you're a basketball player, and I'm just, oh, you just come every now and then. Yeah. All right, thank you. You sit down. Let's, let's give it up for him, Part -timer. man. Part-timer. I've been using him this whole time. <laughs> So if someone who plays basketball regularly, regularly is a player, that means that someone who sins regularly is a what? But if you sin, but you confess and repent and care and you're convicted, you're not a sinner. A righteous man falls seven times and gets back up every single time. Getting back up is actually a form of righteousness because we're all going to fall. So what if I told you you have to fall on this walk? The Bible says a righteous man falls. The minute you think you can't fall, take heed lest you fall. You see? So he died and he rose on the third day. And if we believe and we turn away from sin, meaning no more practicing sin, we're going to practice righteousness because we are righteous. We're going to walk towards holiness because we are holy. We're going to walk towards purity because we are purified by the blood. When you have that, you're clothed in the righteousness of Christ. You're born again, filled with the Holy Spirit. And you have the power every day to walk this walk out. Now, instead of working a job that you hate, you're now working the job that you love. Because the passion comes by the Holy Spirit. Now, he gives you the desire and the ability to want to serve God. You couldn't tell me I was going to be a pastor or a preacher 10 years ago. I would have laughed. But God gave me the ability by his power to do so. Amen. Amen. But you need the Holy Ghost. You cannot receive the Holy Ghost if you don't believe in your. You must believe in your. Your heart, not your mind. Why does the Bible say heart and not mind? Because when someone believes in something in their heart, they follow it. You know how many people believe in Jesus in their mind but not in their heart? How many times have, have, you, have you believed about doing something in your mind? Some of you, I'm going to go to the gym. You believe it in your mind. At that moment, you've accepted, I'm going to go to the gym. But then you don't go. Because you never believed in your heart. When you believe in your heart, no matter. You ever get that feeling when it connects from your, heart, your mind to your heart? And you're like, I'm going. There's nothing that's going to stop me. I'm going to the gym. Right? Because you got to believe in your heart and confess from your mouth. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. There's a lot of people who believe in Jesus in their mind and they're not born again. And then they wonder, why do I keep going back to this iniquity? Why don't I care about and love Jesus like these crazy people do? I don't get it. And then you go back to the world and you think Jesus ain't real. It ain't that Jesus ain't real. It's that you're not being real. You got to let him in your heart. Everyone say heart. So tonight I believe people are going to give Jesus Christ their heart tonight and he's going to fill you with the most overwhelming love and joy and peace it's the best feeling in the world because nothing on this world can give you what God can give you it's all temporary things that we can't even take with us to heaven 
or hell. We can't take none of this with us to the eternal realm. This is all temporary. Anything that you accomplish on this earth means nothing. It's all filthy rags to God. You know what pleases our Father? Faith. Walking on the narrow path, following him. You cannot please the Father without faith. So when you go do works for God, he's not pleased because of your works. He's pleased because of your faith to do those works. The heart behind it. Amen. So what I want to do right now is do what I always do. Let's all close our eyes real quick. The reason I say close your eyes is so that you can focus and not worry about, worry about the person next to you. So I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would touch everyone right now. Some of you might have gone back to the world. You once gave your life to Christ in your heart and you went back to the world and you've been living a lukewarm lifestyle. And you know you need to come back because you have not been feeling convicted. You have not been caring. And you, know you need to come back like the prodigal son or daughter. And I promise you, God, is, God wants you to come back more than you do. Some of you were raised in religion and never had a relationship with Jesus. You thought your relationship with Jesus was believing in your mind that he's God, but never having to, to actually follow him. Some of you have never given your life to Christ and you came here to experience Jesus because you saw videos online or heard, heard someone talk to you about it. Praise God. What I want to do right now is pray, Holy Spirit, touch everyone right now in their hearts and in their minds. Let them know right now if they need to surrender. Everyone keep your eyes closed in Jesus' name. Raise your hand if you need to give your life to Christ and raise it high, 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 high. Raise it high, raise it high. Some of you are not raising your hand because you think that you can't do it, but let me tell you, you cannot. In Christ, he gives you the power to be able to do it. You can't do it in your own strength. You need Christ. That's a partnership. So raise your hand high. There we go. Raise it high. There we go. So on the count of three, I want everyone to come to the altar that's raising their hand. And Jesus, Jesus is going to meet you here. One, two, three. Come to the front. Let's give it up for Jesus. Come on. Then for everybody online, if you want to give your life to Christ online, you can literally follow this prayer with us. Be born again where you're at in your home. The reason we do these videos and have invested into this equipment is to be able to reach the nations so that we can multiply Jesus and shine our light all over so you can be born again right now. You don't need me to touch you. You don't need to be here so everyone can clap. You giving your life to Christ is signing a contract to fight in the, in the kingdom of God. It's going to be a fight where you take up your, take up your cross and suffer for the, the, the sake of the gospel. So if you need to give your life to Christ, I want you to put a two in the chat right now. And as you follow along with this prayer of everyone here at the front, the Lord is going to touch you wherever you at. In your car, your apartment, your house. You don't have to give your life to Christ in a church. The building is beautiful because of air, AC. Last night in the streets of New York City, people were born again and filled with the Holy Ghost in a place where there's a whole bunch of demonic activity. God can meet you anywhere you're at. Put a two in the chat if you need to give your life to Christ. There's people on here who have been living a lukewarm lifestyle. These videos have convicted you and made you want to seek God more. Praise God for that. Tonight's the night where you give your life to Christ where you're at right now. And the Holy Ghost is an all present. He's, he's omnipresent everywhere at once spirit so that means where you're at the same holy ghost is here in this building he's everywhere he's all knowing and all powerful and he can touch you you can be delivered healed baptized in the holy spirit where you're at so make sure you put a two in the chat and i believe they're going to put a link that you can fill out if you've given your life to christ so we can count up the souls just like they did in the bible because we want to we want to boast in christ about what he's doing in this end times revival hallelujah let's all give it up for jesus Come on, let's give it up for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey, how old are you? Eleven. Eleven. And you want to give your life to Jesus? Yeah. God. Came with her? Mom? Amen. What about you? How old are you? Twelve. Twelve? And you? Nineteen? Family? Yeah. Praise God. This is, this is beautiful. Y'all are surrendering to Jesus at the same time. God is going to take your family and heal and deliver. And it's not just you guys. 
many other brothers, cousins, family members, aunts, uncles are going to get saved because God is rising up leaders in this last hour who are going to stand strong. Entire families and generations are going to be clean. And you being 11 is beautiful. You know, Jeremiah the prophet got called at a young age too. He was 15 when he got called. Being 11 doesn't mean anything. You're actually, you understand what sin is. So you're held accountable. So it's beautiful that you're going to be born again today. God's going to mark you, bro. And he's going to use you even at 11. You want to be used by God? Praise God, man. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. All right, so this is what we're going to do. One, one, one question. Is anybody here at the front or in the building repenting of fornication? Amen. Can I, can I be real? You know how much God hates fornication? God hates fornication so much that he anointed a military general to go cast Jezebel off of that, that castle and feed her to the dogs. God hates fornication and idolatry. I just want to give it to you guys as a loving warning. Please flee from fornication. That means run really fast. You don't want to deal with those issues. Amen? I just say that in love, being obedient to the Spirit. There's people here who think they can give their life to Christ and still be in fornication. The Holy Spirit will be grieved. You don't want to do that. Amen? All right. So everyone at the front and even online, I want you all to close your eyes. Put your hands down. Relax. You don't have to cross your hands. You don't have to be nervous. This is the best day of your life. This is the day that you're born again and that you're, you're going to be seated in heaven with Jesus. That if you die, tomorrow you're going straight to heaven. I want all of you to say this. Say, Jesus, you are my Lord. I believe it. You're my master. I'm going to follow you. Seek you daily. You're my savior. You died on the cross. And you beat the devil, you beat the world, you beat the flesh. And the blood you shed wipes all my sins away right now. I confess all my sin to you. I let go. I believe you were buried and you rose on the third day, which proves you are God. Jesus, you are God. Say, I repent of all my wickedness, all my sin. I'm done being a sinner. Today, I'm a saint. Say, Jesus, fill me with your Holy Spirit and empower me to be a witness to the nations. I forgive anybody who's hurt me who's wronged me I forgive them just as you forgive me All right, I'm going to pray you guys can keep your eyes closed hands down before I pray I want to say this some of you have been baptized as a baby and it wasn't real baptism you cannot be baptized unless you believe and repent you can't believe the gospel of Jesus Christ if, you know, if you've never heard it and if you've never believed in it so if you got baptized as a baby, you did not get properly baptized. All you did was take a bath. Some of you got baptized as a teenager, even older than that. And you got baptized because you thought if you got baptized in water, God would be pleased. And because your family forced you to do it. But you never knew the gospel. You have to know the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is that you're a sinner. And that one sin sends you to hell. But that by the blood of Jesus Christ, you can be forgiven. His blood wipes all your sin away. So in the past, when you got baptized, it was just a bath, bath. Some of you did understand the gospel and baptism and were baptized, but just went back to the world and you're coming back. You don't need to be baptized. Put your faith in that one baptism and thank God that you're coming back as a prodigal tonight. So for everyone at the front and even in the crowd, if you need to be water baptized, I'd like you to raise your hand. And what I'd like you to do right now is I'd like you to actually go over there towards the baptism tub and go get baptized. Let's praise Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. You guys can go now. And any, anybody in the crowd that wants to get baptized, if you felt it and you were like, man, I need to be baptized, go. 
We set up the baptism tub every service just for this. The Bible says, believe, repent, be baptized in water and receive the Holy Ghost. Water baptism is an outward representation of what happened inwardly. It is the first step to discipleship and it's very important. If you don't get water baptized, I can question whether or not you really believe in the same God I believe in. Because if Jesus Christ got baptized to fulfill our righteousness, we need to get baptized too. Hallelujah. So if you need to be water baptized, because there's more in here. And some of you are like, I don't want to get wet. Who cares? Stand up. Go get baptized. Come on. If you need to get baptized, if you need to get baptized, there we go. All right. Pastor Benji, can you move? Hey, you guys can move over here. Move down. Praise God. And they're going to be praying for them in the baptism tub for the baptism of the Holy Ghost and all that. So what I want to do right now is um, anyone who does not speak in tongues, come to the front. I highly recommend you get up now. Um, you need the gift of tongues. Stand up. <laughs> And uh, Pastor Benji, could you just line them up? Can you line them up? Uh, just uh, just in a, in a, in a, sink, like a, a nice line. Hallelujah, man. This is beautiful. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain tongues. Really quick. I did it last night in New York City where there's a lot of religion. People literally repented from religion, got delivered, and baptized in the Holy Spirit. It was beautiful. So I'm going to explain it now here too. The Bible says that tongues are an unintelligible language. In the book of Corinthians, Paul says it's an unintelligible language, which means in your mind, you cannot understand it. I'm going to give you guys an example. If right now you went to China... Would you be able to understand Mandarin? Because it's unintelligible to you. You don't understand it. What is, what is language? Language is sound. It's a frequency. It's a pitch coming out of you. And it's a pattern that people become accustomed to in their brain that allows them to understand things. Amen. So tongues are an unintelligible language that only God knows. Paul says it. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 1 through 5. Amen. So it sounds like a babble. Just like a baby who does not know English in the first few years of being, of, of being born, they speak with a babble. Because they don't know how to speak. They don't understand the pattern of English yet. So when you speak in tongues, it's the Holy Spirit speaking through you. The Holy Spirit prays through you things that you cannot understand or even know. And when he prays through you, your body, your organs will vibrate and create a frequency and sound pitch that produces a language that you cannot understand. That's what language is. Your organs vibrating and your vocal cords coming out with a sound. Just like a piano has chords, a guitar has chords, your vocal cords produce a sound. The Holy Spirit prays through you and produces a sound that you cannot understand unless you have the gift of interpretation. And in that same chapter, when Paul said there must be an interpreter if someone is speaking in tongues, he also says there should be judges if anyone prophesies. So if right now I prophesy over somebody and we don't have judges to judge whether or not the prophecy is correct, does that mean we're a false church? No. There are many churches where prophecy is released. The word of God is prophecy. Without judges, it's because God was using Paul to bring order in a church that was completely out of order. It's the hermeneutics of scripture. Hallelujah. The context, the understanding of what the Holy Spirit was inspiring the writer to write. Amen. That's why you need a relationship with God before you read the Bible. If you read the Bible in the flesh, you'll become a Pharisee. 
But when you read the Bible with the Holy Spirit, who illuminates and brings light to the letters, you'll get what's called revelation. So, some of you in here have been thinking, they're speaking in tongues with no interpreter, that's demonic. No, your understanding of scripture is demonic. You're coming in agreement with a lie. Amen, he's coming up for tongues. Hallelujah. <laughs> that's beautiful. So again, it's not, it's not about how it sounds. It's about the rivers of living water that flow in your belly. The Bible says it's a deep groaning. If I was to groan right now, I could not groan from my mouth and go, uh, uh. It doesn't sound right. If I groan, I have to go, uh, from my belly. It's a deep groaning that comes from your belly. It's from the belly. And it's the diversity of tongues, which means your tongues are supposed to change. They change in seasons. They change with different types of, pray of prayers. Did you know that you can pray in tongues with an intention? I can pray in tongues that's tongues of warfare, tongues of worship. Paul said, I pray and I sing in an unintelligible language. He prayed and he sung in tongues. Amen. So everyone at the front, you know how you get, you know how you get the gift of tongues? Faith. Because you're saved by what? Grace through? Faith. You cast out a demon with? You heal the sick with faith. Do I ever, does the Holy Spirit possess me and make me go lay hands on someone to get healed? No, I have to say I'm going to do it. And then the Holy Spirit partners with me and his power allows it. But the access of God's power to that vessel is only by me, a conduit of the Holy Spirit. And my faith. My faith is the mediator between that healing and, the, and God. Isn't that beautiful? Just like with deliverance and just like right now with speaking in tongues. So just like right now, if I said go right now and lay hands on that person to get healed, you probably would be nervous, but you would go and you would do it and they would get healed. And you would realize that it wasn't you, it was God, but you also had to partner with him and actually do it in faith. Amen. It's the same thing with tongues. Nothing possesses you and makes you speak in tongues. If God is a God of self-control, yesterday in New York, you know what happened? We're praising and worshiping God all together in one accord. One accord means one soul. And some guy, God bless him if he's watching, started saying, Jehovah, Joshua, Yahweh, like in between. And I'm like, bro, he's, that's out of order. The spirit of prophecy is subject to the prophet. He has control over his tongue. Fred. Go talk to him. And Fred talked to him and he left. He has control over his tongue. It's the same thing with tongues right now. You have control over it. And you can speak in tongues whenever you want once you get that gift. When What if I told you the gift is already inside you when you receive Christ? It's only released through faith. You have the same Holy Spirit as me. Amen. Are y'all ready for this? So what you're going to do after we pray is in faith, you're going to open up your mouth and begin to pray. And as you move in faith, the Holy Spirit will take over and rivers of living water will flow through your belly. Some of you at the front right now actually believe this message I'm preaching in your heart and even online. Some of you still doubt. Regardless, the message was preached and God will do it in his timing. Hallelujah. So are y'all ready at the front? I want everyone to put your hands down. Don't cross them. Close your eyes. Just relax. I'm not going to even touch anybody. The Holy Spirit is going to have his way. Nobody needs to touch you. No catchers are needed either. Nobody needs to catch. Nobody needs to touch. Very simple. Rob, if you can get out the middle. Let him, let him. The Holy Spirit is here. So I want all of you that are about to pray in the Holy Ghost and even online to, online to say this. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. I'm ready. Say, baptize me in your power. I'm ready to speak in tongues. It's a gift you've given me, a promise, my inheritance. Right now, I'm going to open up my mouth and pray in the spirit of God. In Jesus' name. 
And right now, I repent. I turn away of any sin that I've been practicing. I want you all to take a moment right now, and I feel led by the Spirit to say this. Take a moment right now out of your mouth and say what you're turning away from. Some of you in the front right now have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit because you are not walking in faith. You're not following Christ. You know that you're living in sin. So if you're dealing with something, I want you to say, right now I repent of, it might be porn, it might be cursing, it might be lying, it might be fornication. Just out loud say it. I'm not worried about what it is. I'm saying, I want you to say it out loud because there's life and death in the tongue. Break that curse. Because right now as you release it, you're saying that I, this is not me no more and I'm forgiven right now. Amen. Now I want all of you at the front to say, the Bible says... That if I confess my sins to Jesus, he's faithful to wash away all unrighteousness. So right now, Holy Ghost, I'm ready to move in faith. In Jesus' name. All right, keep your eyes closed, hands down. I'm going to pray. I pray right now, Jesus. I ask you, Lord, that you would baptize your children right now in your fire, your power. Right now, baptize them in your power. In Jesus' name. Now I'm going to begin to pray in tongues. If everyone that prays in tongues and the crowd could stand up, we're going to pray together in order, in decency and order. The Bible says make sure everything is done in decency and order, but never to forbid to speak in the tongues. So when I begin to pray, all the saints that are baptized in the Spirit of God are going to pray. And we're going to pray orderly in tongues. And I believe many people in these lines are going to begin to speak in tongues and I want you guys to let it go with faith which means you're not going to whisper you're going to pray you're going to pray you're going to pray with passion in Jesus name remandi alaba sore rebaki alaba to remantia rebeke teke reke teke te rebaka sore there you go rebaka sa remanta tatake seke teke reke se remandi alabaka Robo ke si alabako, reba kata karaka sokoro, robo ko sokoro. Hete ki ya robo ko she rebe ki ya raba ba ba ba. Hete ka ya robo ko ye she rebe ki ya. Open up, open up your mouth. Pray, pray, pray. Let it go. Release it. Hete she robo ko ye te ki ya raba ba. There it is, right now, right now. To she robo ko, hete ka ya rebe ki ya. Ye te ki ya robo ko so robo ko. Let the rivers of living water flow through your belly. Release it. Open up. There it is right there. You got it. You got it. Keep going. Let it go. Louder. Louder. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Come on. Open. You're right there. It's right there in your belly right now. Rivers of living water. Release. Let it go. There it is. Open up. Esharabaka. Get your key a roboko. Esharababa baba. No roboko so rabaka ya lebekia. Esharabekia roboko. Hataka ya rababa baba. Usharereboko so rebekia rababa baba. No roboko so roboko. Get your key a rabaka. Erabaka so roboko. Erebekia rabaka. And everybody in the crowd blasting tongues right now. Open up your mouth. Come on. And fire. Come on. Come on. It's faith. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. You receive the Spirit of God. Let it go. Release it tonight. Release it tonight. Let it flow through your belly. Release it. Release it. Open up. Come on. Let the fire flow through your belly. Let the fire flow through your belly. Let the fire flow through your belly. Some of you right now are getting touched right now. You are filled right now. Some of you feel it from deep within. Let it go. Don't worry about who's next to you. Let it go tonight. Walk out of here with the fire God in your bed. Let it go tonight. Don't worry about who's next to you. Don't worry about who's in front of you. Don't worry about who's behind you. Speak. Esha roboko. Yataka yere be 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 be. 
Oh, Yeshere Bakaya Rabaka, Oh, Roboko, Yataka Yere Bebe Bebe, Oh, Roboko, Yasharaba Baba Baba, Oh, Roboko, come on, open up your mouth with faith. There it is, you got it right there. Come on, in the belly, from the belly, right there, right there, from the belly. Come on, open up, Yasharabako, all of you right here. Open up your mouth right now. The fire is in you. The fire is in you. Release it. Release it. Yes, that's a rabaka. Your roboco. Get the key out of Yes, that's it. Right there. You got it right there. There it is. There it is. Fire. There it is. Right there. Right there. Oh, yes, Sharabaka. Come on. Come on. There it is. There it is, woman of God. Let it go. Let it flow like a river of living water. Let it flow. Yep, right there. Right there. Fire in the name of Jesus. Let it flow. Let it flow. Yep, you got it. You got it. Let it go. Let it go in Jesus' mighty name. There it is. There it is in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Fill them all. Fill them all. Right there, woman of God. Right there. Let it go. Let it go in Jesus' mighty name. Fill them. Fill them. Fill them. Fill them. Fill them. Hey, I call your roboco. Yet I call your rebaca. Right, I call your robo. Shut that in a roboco. Hey, there's the power. There's the power. Yeah. 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 Jesus. be seated we're gonna have a mass deliverance now well I'm sorry everyone go back to their seats I mean we're gonna pray for mass deliverance now and mass healing Your unclean spirit, come up and on. Come up, come up, 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 out. In the name of Jesus. Out, out. Come out of her. Come out of her. Come out of her now. Everything leave. Out, out. In Jesus' name. Out. Leave the stomach. Leave her. Leave her. No infertility. Leave. Leave. Up and out. In Jesus' name. There we go. Up and out. All right. So what we're going to do now, you guys put the microphone, as we're going to go through the um, deliverance, the mass deliverance. Y'all ready? All right. So if you need deliverance, please stand up. Hallelujah. All right. So 
We're going to start off with confession. And the importance of confession is to break legal right. As you guys confess the things that you know you're dealing with, and even things you don't know, you break legal right in the spirit realm. And the enemy cannot say that I belong in this body. We give him an eviction note, a notice when we, can, when we confess. When we partner with Satan and we partake in sin as a sinner, which is a practicer of sin, the devil has the legal right to be inside of us. But when we say that we're done and we confess the blood of Jesus washes away every accusation of the enemy, the accuser of all brethren, and these demons have to go back to the abyss. Hallelujah. So, I want to go through the confession. I want everyone to repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I confess all sins that I'm aware of and not aware of. And thank you for forgiving me. I want you out loud to release the sin you need to confess of. Let it go. Release it. It could be, un it could be rejection. It could be unforgiveness. It could be lust it could be anger it could be you, you know what sin that you're practicing that you need to stop let it go now say Jesus I repent of my sin I turn away and I turn to you for forgiveness say I forgive every person who's harmed me or wronged me just as you have forgiven me. Now I want you out loud to say the name of the person you need to forgive and what they did to you. It's very important. Say out loud. Be like, I say, I forgive John. I forgive Sarah for the molestation, for leaving me. I forgive my mom and dad for not being in my life. Whatever it is, release it out of your mouth. Some of you are, begin, are going to begin to get delivered right now. You're going to start crying. You're going to start feeling things. Moving your body. Praise the Lord. Unforgiveness is one of the biggest ways. The Bible says that you will be handed to the tormentor. Through unforgiveness. Book of Matthew. Now I want you to say this. For all those who were involved in witchcraft. If you were involved in the occult, if you've ever burned sage, went to a tarot card reader, went to an energy healer, Reiki, chakra, all these things are demonic. Even if you did yoga, if you practiced yoga, that's, that's a satanic practice. If you worshipped statues in a Catholic church, that's idolatry. That's demonic. I want you to say out of your mouth, say, Jesus... I confess and repent of being involved in the occult, any idolatry, and any witchcraft. Say, I renounce all witchcraft in Jesus' name. Now say, Jesus, your word says in the book of Joel, anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be delivered. I'm calling on you now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, deliver me from every unclean spirit. Say, Jesus, I renounce. Now I want you out loud to say the things that you know you need deliverance from. Whatever it may be. It can be anxiety, pride, anger, lust, rejection, depression, suicide, witchcraft getting witchcraft attacks and you feel like they're inside of you because you were in the cult and you know you need deliverance renounce it that means you're coming out of agreement with it and you're saying god this this don't belong in me no more i'm a child of god and because of what jesus did every demon gotta go so say it out loud because I, as i begin to pray demons are gonna come out devils are gonna come out people are gonna get freed i don't gotta touch you nobody has to touch you the power of the holy ghost is all powerful Are you guys ready? There's people in here who are dealing with bitterness. Bitterness towards somebody. You've forgiven, but you have bitterness. 
you're not letting go of the bitterness even people have offense I want you to say Lord I renounce bitterness and offense I don't want this feeling anymore say Jesus deliver me I want you to close your eyes put your hands down I'm gonna begin to pray people are gonna get delivered right now as I begin to pray so relax, close your eyes, put your hands down. I'm going to begin to pray. Can you guys, I'm Productions, turn up the volume on my microphone, por favor. Significantly, thank you. All right, there we go, that's perfect. Just receive it. You, don't, if you, how, you cannot receive a prayer if you're praying while someone prays. So don't pray. Don't pray, just receive. I'm going to pray now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bind every unclean spirit. I bind every strong man. I bind every Jezebelic spirit, every spirit of Leviathan, every spirit of Python, every spirit of rejection, every principality, power, and ruler of darkness, and any spiritual wickedness in high places has to be, has to leave tonight. We're breaking the chains and the cord of wick wickedness. Any soul tie, any unhealthy soul ties broken with anyone who slept with somebody in the name of Jesus. And on the count of three, I want every unclean spirit to come up and out and go to the abyss. Every demon that leaves anybody's flesh or soul goes straight to the bottomless pit in the name of Jesus. On the count of three. One, two, three. Ow! Ow in Jesus' name. Ow in Jesus' name. Out in Jesus' name, up and out in the name of Jesus. Out in Jesus' name. Out in Jesus' name. Up and out. I command every spirit of anxiety to come up and come out now in Jesus' name. Any spirit of perversion, up and out in Jesus' name. Any spirit of lust. Up and out, all incubus and succubus spirits. Up and out in the name of Jesus. Out, leave them in Jesus' name. Any spirit of Jezebel, Leviathan. Up and out, up and out in the name of Jesus Christ. Every unclean spirit, come up and come out now. Leave in Jesus' name. Leave, leave. Come up and come out. Leave the nope. Leave the arms. Leave the arms. Leave the arms. I bind and paralyze every unclean spirit. You can't hide no more. I break every generational curse. A witchcraft off of everybody in here's bloodline in the name of Jesus Christ come out of her come out all the way leave her leave her all infirmity go leave 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 go to the abyss in Jesus name leave leave the stomach leave the hands everything goes now in Jesus name in Jesus name any unclean spirit of infirmity I command you to loose loose Every unclean spirit of infirmity loose now. All depression up and out in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All spirits of idolatry out in Jesus' name. All spirits of idol worship from the Catholic Church come up and out and leave their lives right now in Jesus' name. Everything go. Come off the back. Every python spirit. Every witchcraft spirit leave. In Jesus' name. Everything go in Jesus' name. Leave. 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 Leave, leave. I break every unhealthy soul tie. Come out, come out in Jesus' name. Ow, our rejection go. Every spirit of rejection, come up and come out now. Ow, up and out now in the name of Jesus. Ow, leave, leave her, her back, her stomach, everything. Ow, in Jesus' name. Everything leave in the name of Jesus Christ. Hold on a second. All right, raise your hand if you felt a physical manifestation in your body right now as I was praying. Come to the front. Could I have pastors come up, please? Pastor Joel. All right, and let me have the deacons and deaconesses come up as well. And please line up in a straight line. Praise God. So we're going to lay hands on you, these prayer warriors. All right.
All right, you guys ready? I want you guys to just relax. We're going to begin to, we're going to, begin to command spirits to come out. And we're going to lay hands. Deacons, deaconesses, pastors, you guys can lay hands now. Lay hands on people. Women with women, men with men. And begin to pray. So right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you, Father, that right now people are going to get delivered from demons. By the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, and the faith of your saints. Every unclean spirit come up and come out now in Jesus' name. Up and out now in the name of Jesus Christ. If, you, if you're in the crowd and you believe you need deliverance, come to the front and you can get prayed for too. Come to the front. And just please line up in that straight line right there. Every unclean spirit, up and out in Jesus' name.
doing nothing. I just want you to take this time to worship the Lord. Although the power belongs to you, God, yet it is more quiet and more close. Although the glory belongs to you, it all belongs to you. Everything belongs to you in Jesus' name. You belong, you belong in Jesus' name. Hey. Hey. 
Espírito Santo. Hey. Thank you, Jesus, that you're in this room tonight. I pray that you just touch everyone, Lord, that you take us to a deeper dimension. That you take us to a new dimension. Take us to a new dimension. Take us to a new dimension. A new dimension. A new dimension. Take us to a new dimension.
we got going on. They just left. They didn't really say anything. They still, they still going out. All right, family. God bless you guys. Y'all give it up for Jesus. Y'all see what Jesus is doing tonight? Souls being set free, delivered. Oh, it's beautiful. Hey. So we about to, we about to just finish off with communion. Oh, I love communion. Does everybody have a cup? Who doesn't have a cup? Raise your hand if you don't have a cup. Whoever doesn't have a cup, Please, those who have the communion cup, can you please walk around and get them a cup? Thank you. Man, ain't it beautiful what Jesus did tonight? Hallelujah. I just love it. I just love it when souls are saved, people are delivered, set free. Like, that's really just the purpose of life is to glorify Jesus. That's it. There's no real reason of living. So... I'm just in awe. I'm always in awe what Jesus does. Amen? He's just so wonderful, so amazing. Come on. So we about to get into communion. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Everybody got a cup now? Who does not have a cup? Come on. We got the cameraman too. Don't forget the cameraman. Don't forget the cameraman. Hey, y'all give it up for the cameraman. Come on. Amen. All right, so that should be everybody now. Amen. All right, communion. Everybody, let's focus up. Let's get our hearts set on communion. Communion is so beautiful. It's something that we are commanded to do in remembrance of what our Lord, our Savior, our King did for us. The sacrifice that he made. Communion is actually a celebration. You know what I'm saying? We celebrate because people don't understand. If it wasn't for his sacrifice, we wouldn't be in this position that we are in right now. If it wasn't for him trading places with us, we wouldn't be in this position so a lot of the times we can get into this point to where we're so down, which when we realize what Jesus Christ had to go through to save us, yes, it's very saddening when we realize it. But I want to tell you this. It's a celebration. Everybody say celebration. Everybody say celebration. Hey, come on. Focus up. Focus. It's a celebration. We remember what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. Remember 
the blood that he spilled just for us. Remember to sacrifice everything, everything. So we're constantly eating the bread of life. Who's the bread of life? Jesus, Jesus is the bread of life. So when we partake of this, we're literally eating the bread of life. We're eating of him. Every single day, we're eating of him. The bread of life. He is life. He gave us life. He gave up his own body so that we could have life. So we do this in remembrance of him. So I want right now everybody to open up and to take out the bread. So this bread right here, it represents his body. It represents that everything that he went through, all the suffering, the scourging, all of it that he went through just for us. It represents how he chose to take on our appearance and he gave us his appearance. This, everything that he went through is represented in this bread right here. You see, when it was, when he was having the supper, the day before he was about to get taken and go, he said, this here is my body. Take, eat, and do this forevermore in remembrance of me. Take, here, eat, and do this forevermore in remembrance of me. I always like to say this. This is literally like our pledge. This is our pledge to God. This is our pledge of allegiance to what he did forevermore. Amen? Amen. This is the Christian pledge of allegiance. Amen? Amen. <laughs> we don't worry about the pledge of allegiance in the United States. We worry about Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? See, we have to understand that we belong to him. We are his. That we are only just pilgrim navigating through this world. That we take part in his death, burial, and resurrection. That we remember everything that he's done and that we know that we in due time will be in his in the fullness of his glory in due time we will have to leave here we will have to give up our temporary citizenship here we're gonna have to give up our green card because right now all of us right now here on earth we're just we're just holding green cards we're not true citizens this is not our citizenship we're not true citizen here on earth our citizenship is in heaven it's in heaven. Amen? Amen. So I want everybody to just take a moment to remember what Jesus Christ did, but remember it and understanding that and, and be glad. Understand that he knew and he chose to do it for you. He chose to do it for you. He chose that route for you. It wasn't in vain. He knew what he had to go through. He knew the sacrifice that he was going to make for you. So just take a moment and just thank him in your heart. Thank him. Tell him thank you. Tell him how much you love him. Tell him how much you remember everything that he went through that is constantly on your mind, that this is what you live by. And I want everybody right now to take the bread, to break, and you may eat. Hallelujah, now the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Come on, everybody open it up. The precious, the precious blood of Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus that reconciles us back to the Father. It's the blood of Jesus that washes away all sin. The toughest of sins. The toughest of sins that you can't get out by your own self. I'm talking about bleach, none of that can wash it out. The blood of Jesus washes it out. The blood of Jesus erases it. The toughest sins. What you think you're stuck in, what you think you can't be, you, you can't be forgiven for, whatever the case may be. I'm telling you, it has no match. The blood of Jesus, it has no match towards the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus washes away everything that you've ever done. Everything that you will do. Even what you've done in the past that you can't seem to forgive yourself about. You have to let it go because the blood of Jesus already washed it he already cleansed it so why are you still banking on the past on your past mistakes 
why you still seeing yourself as unworthy when you see yourself unworthy what you're saying is the blood of jesus is unworthy because he gave his life for you he died for you he shed his blood for you so why are you continuing to see yourself unworthy the blood of jesus christ made you worthy you're made in his image and his likeness so now it's time to accept what he did for you on the cross it's time for you to believe in it. It's time for you to understand that the blood of Jesus washes away all your sins. That you are forgiven. That you are reconciled to the Father. That you no longer have to experience the wrath of God. It's time to understand and to truly let it digest that, wow, I'm truly a son or a daughter of Christ. I truly belong to you. I'm truly made new. I'm truly washed. I'm truly forgiven. You know, a lot of people, I, I realize this, and I even realize this myself. A lot of the time, the only reason why we're bound is because we don't understand the freedom that we truly have. We're searching for something that has already been given to us, and we just haven't walked into it. We're searching for something that has already ours, that has been in our possession, but it's like, it's so close to us. You ever know something that is so simple that it's complex? It's so simple. You believe that this is way too good to be true. This is too simple, so you try to find a way to make it hard. That's what a lot of us do. We try to find a way to make it hard when it's really that simple. And because it's that simple, because Jesus Christ did everything, we just... It's in our human nature to overcomplicate it rather than just accepting, rather than just accepting it. So I want to leave you guys with this today. Walk in to your freedom that's already yours, that you have already been given. It's already right there in front of you. You just have to understand that I have already been set free. Receive it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So I want everybody to hold up the cup of blood right now. We're going to do a toast right now. We're going to do a toast. If you, if you got a neighbor by, beside you or whatever, toast up right now. I want you to toast right there. Go there. Come on. Hallelujah. So I just want everybody to close their eyes. We're going to pray real quick. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, we just thank you for the blood that washes us clean. Jesus, we give you praise because you came down. You left your throne to come down and to die for us. Oh, we receive the blood of Jesus. We receive the purifying blood of Jesus Christ. We believe it and we know that we are cleansed. So right now in Jesus' mighty name, as we take this, all of the condemnation, whatever that we've been holding on to, whatever that we have been allowing to plague us, to make us feel unworthy right now, it shall be eradicated by the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, we thank you for the blood. We are freed from the wrath of you, my God. We are freed from the wrath because of Jesus' sacrifice. So I want you guys, as you sit there with your eyes closed, think about anything that you have in your heart, whatever you have and let go, let go of, any condemnation that is dwelling inside of you, anybody who is feeling unworthy, I want you to ponder on this and I want you to let it go. You have to let it go. Do not take this blood in an unworthy manner. At it is holy. Release any unforgiveness, any bitterness, any un un unforgiveness towards yourself. Let it go tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I pray that as we take this blood, we shall be healed. There shall be healing that takes place in our soul, in our flesh, in our minds. In Jesus' mighty name, oh, we thank you that now we have the precious living blood of Jesus Christ running through our veins. In Jesus' mighty name, you may drink. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all give it up for Jesus. Come on, give him some praise. That's all you got. Give it up for Jesus. Praise his holy name. Hallelujah. 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 That's how you break chains. That's how you truly break chains. Praise every time. Praise. Let that be your garment. Garment of praise, right? Amen. I want to leave you guys with this challenge for the rest of the week. 
going into the new week, put on a garment of praise in every situation. Y'all going to do that? Put every situation that you find yourself in, everything that may seem uncomfortable, something, even if it's not convenient, instead of you complaining, instead of you reacting in any other way, I want you to react with praise. Put on the garment of praise. Let that be your clothes going on. Amen? You guys ought to be conscious to it. Y'all going to be conscious to it? It takes you being conscious to realize that. So whenever you about to, oh, this person cut me off. <gasps> Hallelujah. Salvation in glory. Like, you got to be conscious to it. Amen? Amen. And another thing too. You got to preach the gospel to at least five people. You thought I was going to say one, five. Y'all going to do that? Five. Five. Just preach the gospel. I'm talking about you all got to stop at the gas station to get gas. You all got to get groceries. And some of you guys, I know y'all like to eat out. So y'all better talk to that waitress or waiter, whoever the case, who come and serve you. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. So now we're about to wrap up. So thank you guys. Tonight was powerful. We truly, truly, greatly appreciate you guys for coming out to a fellowship and worship with us. But unfortunately, service has ended. And so, yeah, you guys have a blessed night in Jesus' mighty name. May the, may the Lord send angels to protect you on your way home in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. <laughs>